Bev's Video Kingdom is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Bev's Video Kingdom is brought to you by Angus Bethune's Horrible Memories Custom Alarm Clocks. Do you have a hard time waking up in the morning? Life got you so exhausted that you keep falling asleep at odd times and strange places? Do you have friends or family members who keep falling asleep at your house when all you want is for them to wake up and get the fuck out? Well, we may have a solution for you. Here at Angus Bethune's Horrible Memories Custom Alarm Clocks, we can create a tailor-made experiential machine that's guaranteed to awaken Indian archaleptic. Our founder, Angus Bethune, came up with this idea after realizing Reveille from boot camp was a perfect way to stir up granddad's PTSD and get his old ass moving. Just fill out an easy survey for yourself, friend or loved one, and we'll narrow down exactly what type of hellish awakening will do the trick. Maybe it's the theme song to the horror movie that you were way too young to watch. The flushing sound of the toilet that disposed of your first pet goldfish. Perhaps it's the sound of your father taking off his belt. Whatever it may be, we'll narrow down the perfect sound to get you up and at him, soldier. Angus Bethune's Horrible Memories Custom Alarm Clocks. Wake up, fuckers. <laughs> Scott, you know what yours is. The t- oh, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> What is up in the kingdom? This is Bev's Video Kingdom, and we are back today with one of my picks. This is Nate. Um, And this kind of fits like squarely, squarely into my wheelhouse. We are talking today about the 1995 high school coming-of-age comedy, Angus. I I just want to say right off the bat, it's interesting. We, We just did Tommy Boy last week, and now we're doing Angus, like... Are we gonna give this month a name or something? Are we gonna are we gonna throw a nickname out there? Is it is it Big Kid Month or what? What do we got going here? <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going with this. I, I, did, nice. I did, honestly I didn't even think about that theme because for me like Angus is just so I mean so 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 you know for the, you've all seen it uh, or or you haven't uh, but you should so you know like this part of the frame right is that Angus is a is a chubby kid and he kind of gets picked on and ide- he identifies as a child like. like it's not that like we just see him and think he's a chubby kid or that the bullies do. We hear right off the bat, right, that he he sort of thinks of himself as right. being right. He identifies. You know, as a he's kid. he's self conscious about it. He sees that as a central part of why he's kind of less popular, why he gets picked on, is he's a chubby kid. Um, and for me, right, like I wasn't I wasn't a chubby kid at that age, right? Like I, I was in I was in great shape. Um, oh, great that, shit. Wow, time. he's just throwing adjectives wow. out there. Oh, I, oh, uh-huh. I, 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 <laughs> Brad, Brad, you tell me. Was he in great shape? He, he was in I was shape. in great oh, shape. Wow. Okay. It, it went downhill in a hurry after that, but, but, it, <laughs> but, it, but, it, but then I was. Wow. But, but, I, but I identified totally with him, right? Like in some of the ways, like, you know, because for me, a lot of it was about like the way he saw himself was there, there was this insecurity that was sort of built in and, and, and that like I, I could identify with that at that time, even though it wasn't the same thing, right? But anyway, so so we're talking about this '95 Angus. Um, it was a very modest budget and a relatively modest but profitable box office. So it was 1.5 million budget. It made 4.8 in the box office. Um, I, there's no way to know how much it made with DVD and and you know there were, I guess it would have been probably not VHS at that time, but VHS and DVD and, and other sort of runs. But I th- my sense is that this is more of a like cult classic or a cult catch on. But that said, right? How many uh, of us at the table here? Uh, and we'll introduce our our fourth here in a second. But Scott, had you seen it before? Not only had I never seen this film, I never heard of this film. Okay. I, I had no clue. And you've brought it up a couple times. You, we were, you guys were going to do it, you know, a couple times. You said, oh, our next movie is going to be Angus. And you guys didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's <laughs> the whole, the, t- the timelines on BVK, yeah. you know, they, they never work out properly. And every time I'm like, what the, I, I don't even know what that is. I have no clue. And so, and then, so I, it was, it was nice because I got to discover this movie and 
I actually I started to watch a trailer. Just started. It, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go in completely blind. Yeah. So I kind of I knew who was in it for the most part. I kind of knew it had to do with the fat kid, and that was it. So I went into it completely blind. And like you were saying about the the, the cult classic part of it, I I did you know doing some research on this. A lot of articles about why you should love Angus and why nobody knows about it or something like type of thing. Where yeah. it's like this is a movie you need to watch and you know you missed it. And and so there's a lot of articles about that out there. Yeah. People that are that are they love this movie, and it's very nostalgic. And I could see. I wish I watched it at that age. Yeah. Because it would have been, it, it would be. I would feel like you do. Yeah. I, this would be one of my films yeah. because I was a big kid. I was a fat kid my whole life. I'm a fat adult now. And you were it, a lineman in football. I was a lineman in football. I was in the marching band, but you know, so I was a, kind of a nerd and <laughs> and and a jock at the same time. So it and I, you know, I had the the love interest that was unattainable type situation, you know. And so this movie, as I'm sitting there going, God damn, this was right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. And so, um, but watching it as an adult now, it was kind of a weird watch in a lot of ways. There's some things that a lot of things I loved, but the middle of it. I have some issues with, and we'll get into it. And I don't, I don't want to be a dick, but well, it's just hard to watch it as Just then don't be a dick, dick, dude. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Brad, you had not seen it either, though, right? Which is weird because, I mean, in in the mid-90s, Wait, I was it's watching- It's weird because I probably told you to watch it, so you were like, fuck you. <laughs> You're like, fuck you, I'm not going to watch it. Add for, it to the uh, list, motherfucker. I'm not going to watch it for 22 years, so Add have it to fun the goddamn that. list. Yeah, uh, you probably said, yeah, check this out. I was like, fuck you. Um, <laughs> But on brand. Get you, put your towel on, you fucking specimen. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, I thought I'd see, like, I wasn't sure if I'd seen it. Obviously, I think I mentioned on the pod, I thought Gerard Depardieu was in it. I thought it was something, something completely else. <laughs> I don't know what I thought it was, but I'm waiting for that scene like, oh, yeah, I remember this. And as I watched the movie, that never showed up. So I was like, God damn, I guess I never did see this. And with all the people in it that, that, that kind of stand out, I was like, yeah, I definitely have not seen this. And I'm not going to say it's a great movie, but there are some great things about it. And I think it makes some amazing points with regards to uh, uh, there's some great emotional sequences, some some scenes where Angus with his both his grandpa and with his mom, some amazing scenes, like yeah. some really like heartfelt stuff. And there's some things I was like rooting for. I was like, God damn, I feel this like that. I, yeah. I uh, uh, we need more of this today, like the support for like for each other and stuff. And uh but I mean, as far as the movie itself, the plot is just kind of, it's kind of silly and there's, there's definitely some problems I have it and we'll, we'll talk about this later. But, uh, all in all, I enjoyed it. I was like, you know what? I really, there, there's a lot of things that resonated here and, and I feel like the, the, the ultimate message is positive and you know what? That's shit we need right now. All right. So I'm going to introduce our, our fourth here. Um, and, and, and let me preface this by saying, so you, you might remember from our office space pod, and back then we still did the draft together, and the, oh, yeah, the draft was, there was, was the most memorable uh, bosses. And Katie, a good friend of my wife's from college, came on and, and was our one of our very early judges. Um, so so Katie and my wife are really good friends, and so uh, Katie, um, you know, met her her husband, and the first time her husband and I met, uh, who's uh, we we kind of like were chatting, realized we're both huge movie fans. Uh, and, and so we're like kind of going through, you know, like you do, you know, you kind of go through like, what are your movies? What are your movies? And somehow like not too far into the conversation, one of us is like, Oh, well, you know, like what about Angus? And like, it was just like the record stopped and we were just both like, <laughs> you like Angus? And we just fucking geeked <laughs> out on this. We were like, you know, all the way through it, all the things we love, all the favorite stuff. And so, so we, the next time we saw each other, we, one of us brought the DVD and we sat and watched the movie together and stuff. So, so I was like, so when we started the podcast, uh, Tony was, I was like, Hey, if you ever do Angus, like I would love to be on it. And I'm like, dude, done. If you, when, next time you come to visit from the East coast, we're doing Angus and you're on and Tony, you are on. Man. I, well, welcome to be I, I am on. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to 104 degrees out here on the, uh, <laughs> the outdoor Bev, Bev, the outdoor Bev studio. studio. Oh, oh, my word. I am actually kind of used to 104 degrees, whether it be my hometown of El Paso, Texas, or in Baltimore, Maryland, where I currently reside, where it may not be 104 degrees, but it sure damn feels like that it with humidity. that damn humidity. <laughs> uh, 90, 90 degrees and 175% oh, humidity yeah, is perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's perfect. So, like, okay. You just sweat through your clothes. It's just, you know... A little nasty, but right. so, so tell me why, like why, wh tell me why Angus is such a, like a big movie for you. 
And, and, and by the way, so you're the so so Brad and I and Tony are all class of '97. So yes. it's like this yep. is the same you know like time that we we same saw it. time. And I feel like you know it's it, it was just very poignant to me because I was that big swarthy kid growing up. I mean, starting from eight years old on, I was just big. I was just swarthy, and I was just you know really awkward and just out of touch with the normal life. I mean, you'll you'll hear that word a lot in this movie is normal. Um, I I felt like I identified with Angus. I mean, and I think Scott really hit it. It's like it's weird to watch it now if you're seeing it for the first time. But when you're a 15 year old sophomore who's just feeling really out of place where he is in life and in his high school or anything in like in life you you want you want to root for this you want you want to identify you want to find something to identify yourself with and i think the story of angus just really presents itself in his uh, relationship with uh his grandpa ivan or with his mom basically shows that you know there there is definitely hope uh when it comes to it at that point i was in high school obviously and I would say that I had like I was still struggling with life in, in general, and I just needed a role model. And there was a role model that came into my life, much like uh, Ivan was grandpa, uh, George e. Scott's character. And he basically he wouldn't say it's sum it up as say screw it, you know, but basically he just said you need to stop being aware of what other people think about you. Mm-hmm. All right, and that was very poignant to me. And that came around just before Angus came out, and basically Angus Angus was just like a lot of confirmation about that belief. So, so what's funny about that for me is like, I, and, and and I totally, and I wonder whether or not this resonates with Brad and and Scott, like the things that maybe are positive takeaways. But like, as a kid, I loved this movie in a way that I don't think I could have described. And you know, this is common on Bev's Video Kingdom. It's to some extent, you know, that I don't really think carefully about it. But I really think even if I thought about it at that time, I would have just been like. I just, you know, I'm rooting for this hero and I kind of like the the sort of like, you know, happy ending of it. And I like the, the dynamics of some of the conversations and the funny dialogue. But it, I think it wasn't until years later that a couple of the most meaningful things came through. One that that is really, you know, the, the Superman uh, isn't brave thing is like, mm-hmm. and su- you know, for me, for probably a decade, I've like trotted that out a lot. But the other one that I don't even think in some ways I've learned until the last few years and that hit me harder this time than I'd ever watched it was the screw it, you know, screw them, Angus. Yeah. Like, don't ever care what anybody screw thinks. Yeah. And, like, it, t- it took it took me a really long time, like, to, to, to you know, many years after mm-hmm. you know, Angus was a, was, a, was a movie I loved and that, like, I kind of missed that in some mm-hmm. way, right? I was like, that wasn't part of what consciously was what I loved about it. But now I'm kind of like, oh, dude, that, fuck, that's that's True. in some, you know, it's top five advice, right? Like if I'm going to go, 100%. if I'm going to like mentor, like you said, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to encounter some high school kid who's struggling, like definitely top five piece of advice is like, you got to stop thinking about what anyone else thinks, right? If you can learn that early, mm-hmm. life is a lot better. And I, it took me and I didn't, right? Like right. I, I didn't learn that for way too many years. So I, I, there are things in this that still speak to me in ways that I don't mm-hmm. think they did then. And that's, that's something that's. I wish I, I, I saw this at that age. I wish I was your guys' age when this came out because I needed to hear that advice. I, I needed, because I, I had quite a few situations where I was bullied and picked on, and I never really got that boost. And I, I found my confidence later in college, which I was in college when this came out, so it kind of makes sense why I didn't watch this. Right. Yeah. right. And I, I remember seeing Seven around that, that year. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so that was, that's what I was so, into. So instead of being like, screw them, you were just like, what's in the box? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kill them all. What's in the box? <laughs> Wait to hear my alternate uh. ending on this. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I just, so I'm, I'm curious, like, was this, some, was this a movie that when you saw, did the movie give you confidence based on, like, did you say, oh, my God, here's, here's a guy I relate to. And at the end, he's telling everybody, look, dude, we're the fucking normal ones. You, you know, Vanderbeek, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, did, did that kind of help at all as far as your attitude? I mean, absolutely. I, I, I mean, back in that day, one of my outlets was to go to the movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, uh, my parents were split up by then. You know, it was just rough going. And the one outlet that I had from the – one outlet that I had from the – uh, rigors of life at that point was to go to the movies. And this movie, basically, it just popped up and I just wanted to go see something. And 
I went and, cho- and chose to see this because I saw the previews because the soundtrack was freaking awesome. Yeah, we haven't even talked about awesome. We haven't talked about that yet. And we, we have not. To, we like, we, we, we will we talk we about the soundtrack. We can't sleep on that much longer. We, cannot speak, we cannot hold back on the soundtrack that much longer. But the fact is, is that even though I came for the soundtrack, uh, I left for the story. It was just something that was very poignant to me. It gave me a lot of hope. It gave me something to look forward to because, yes, I know that uh, if I just listened to the advice that my um, my teacher had given me, if I just continue watching and relating to this movie or any other movies that may give me confidence, then yes, I will succeed. I will graduate from high school. I'll say, fuck them, all right? To screw what everybody else thinks. I am going to go get the job that I want. I'm going to go get the girl that I want to marry. And you know what? I did all those things, and I say, you know what? It all it it was all because I mean it wasn't just because I went to the theater that one day, but it was part of it. Right. No. That was it's it it was part of the foundation. All right. So on the soundtrack, Brad, like how how good is this soundtrack for you? So it's it's right as the kind of punk and then kind of the ska punk like is just kind of starting to make its way around. And so you've got you've got Green Day, you've got uh, Weezer, and then you've got things like the Dancehall Crashers. I mean, it's got. Goo Goo Dolls, it's it's all that that mid nineties, uh, post grunge, starting to get into that kind of power punk type stuff, and and it's a lot of fun, and it just and it's it a, rocks. It's a funny one because like it's a real it's it's a killer killer soundtrack for that one moment. Like yeah, it's not it, you know because some soundtracks I'm thinking like of Dazed and Confused, like that's one it pulls from an era, but it's like a broader like that soundtrack is like you know an all timer kind of thing. You don't feel like it's just giving you this but like this movie for that one moment there's no more perfect like you know if it, it takes you to that time and you listen listening to the radio at that time and it's some great music right like i'm a huge green day fan and have, have been for a long time I, I really like the goo goo dolls so to me the soundtrack almost inexplicably like outkicks the coverage here and that a movie that doesn't have a huge budget you would think like you know how did they do this right because music I think, takes up a lot of budget, and I think part of the story here is that that the executive producer of this movie was at the time the producer for Green Day. Yeah, and so he's like, "We're putting them on there." Exactly. So there's tons of Green Day references, and there's Green Day in it, and, and that helps. He has that connection to get some the license to some of this other music cheap. I think. And, we, and we've talked about with with Scotch. I mean, your whole situation with the American Pie Two soundtrack, and. Right. and how they basically like screwed you guys over in in a situation where the the music they put into the movie was not the music that was on the soundtrack, which was the, in this case it's kind of the opposite where it, everything right. is on the soundtrack. Right. Yeah. No. It's it's always interesting to see. You know, they're just trying to, you know, put in the the big hits and whatever, and then you know what the soundtrack that ended up being was different than a lot of there's a lot of songs in the movie that weren't on the soundtrack and that's really strange but American Pie is all those soundtracks actually capture the moment really well as well I love those yeah. soundtracks yeah well, American Pies are, are really good too yeah. Um, but yeah you mentioned the um, it was funny because I was looking at the credits as I was watching this thing and a name went across and it said Elliot Kahn and he's so he actually was an original member of Sha Na Na <laughs> and so he was Green Day's manager and he produ- he did the music in this film was behind a lot of it and he was actually our lawyer at the end toward, towards the end of our career and for our band oh, wow. that's all the wow. name like dude Elliot Full circle. <laughs> excuse me no. while I pick up this name name drop there but yeah no it was just weird to see that and, and then I, I I didn't realize that he was actually Green Day's manager at the time when I was doing the research on this as well so. well just that Weezer was also I mean the yeah. Mallrats uh, and and if you've heard our theme song. And you think, oh, that sounds a little bit like Weezer. Well, that's very intentional. Uh, uh, Zach's a huge fan. <laughs> Zach's not with us today. He couldn't make it. But, you know, uh, he's a huge fan of Weezer. And so uh, they were just getting into some movie soundtracks, I guess, trying to get, uh, you know, get their name out there a little bit more. And mm-hmm. then they start putting out the hits and videos. And, and they're and, and, for, and for me, huge. Th- this is one of the sneaky best opening credits, like music sequences I've oh, ever seen. Absolutely. I mean, and it's not it's the, the song. I downloaded the song some years ago and listened to the song like as it as it is originally recorded, which is awesome. Awesome uh, by by Love Spit Love. One Love of the Spit worst yeah. names ever. <laughs> 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 worst names <laughs> ever. Yeah. Horrible. Um, but, but I think it's great. Love the, Spit Love. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and the song itself is is really good. Um, but the the way that they do it in the movie, where they incorporate the sounds of the marching band, the arrangement, it's yeah. unreal. Yeah, like, it is very cool. It, it's yeah. just it ki- it kills. Every I don't ever get tired. I almost could watch. It's the only opening credits where I'm not like after I've seen it once, I'm like, okay, let's skip this. I'm like, oh, I'll watch this every. I, I will say I was watching with my son, who's uh, uh, high school. But he's also drum line and, and does the uh, the marching band stuff, and he's just like. Those drums are completely out of sync with the song right now. This is this is this is pitiful. <laughs> this is trash. He was he was very critical <laughs> of, of the whole drum line oh, sequencing. Man. That he's like, it's not matching up, uh, and they're they're not playing what it, what is actually showing uh, what it was coming through the speakers. And so yeah, he, he threw a critical ear to it, which I was like, shut up, kid. I'm watching this movie. <laughs> that's the problem. Shut with up. Ed- best editing, movie ever. <laughs> editing though, because like, there's a couple spots where they actually nailed it. They had it good, but then all of a sudden there's a couple that wasn't. And uh, but yeah, whatever. So so, so I know I, I want to hear some of the problems, but before before I hear the problems I want to throw out a couple things that like really really uh, that I really love about the movie number one for me is the well maybe number one is the couple of like real points of wisdom so like you know the the Superman can't be uh, you know isn't brave and the and the screw him screw him you know uh, who cares what anybody else thinks and I'd say the dynamic the the the, the Back and forth between, especially Angus and George C. Scott, is is really like it's emotional at times. It's kind of it feels very real in a kind of quippy way. Like it it doesn't feel super forced for either on either side of it, which I really love. Um, and especially like where George C. Scott's playing this character that's kind of a little bit out of you know not his typical thing. You think of him as Patton, you know, so yeah. it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Doctor Strange. But for me, the like maybe the number one sneaky thing is that like they don't do they don't they, they don't. The, even though there's some very typical things about the plot, they don't just make everything completely cookie cutter the way you expect it. So like the fact that Angus beats the shit out of Rick throughout the movie, right? Like yeah. it's, you know, Rick is this like incredible bully, super nasty, super mean, and continues to be, but constantly gets his nose broken by Angus, right? Like, like <laughs> there's no, like, well, when, when else is like, you know, they're a bully that, you know, is beating, getting beat up by his but, victim. But the, it, it's, it's truth in that. And that's what I respected about it was the fact that I remember there was a bigger kid in, in, one, in our class that, that uh, was getting teased constantly. I think it was in PE, like in, in early high school and in the locker room, just this, this skinny little punk kid got wrecked by the the big kid who was getting made fun of and just yeah came through and wrecked because he, yeah. he's uh, it's just a matter of physics but, bigger but, boy is going to but, just but, smash but, on the but, little I mean, guy I think, but i think what part of what that does too is it not only like sort of like tells that truth of it but also that like bullying isn't always that you know like you can be a mean motherfucker and not necessarily, you know, be able to beat anyone's ass. Like, like you, men- you know, right. Men- you know, like the, the mental bullying. stuff is, yeah. yeah, that's really. And, that's, and that's, that's what kind of resonated with me from high school is that there was just a lot yeah. of mental shit that, like, I, I always felt that some of the people that were getting picked on, if they would have fought back, it would have been yeah, it lights got, out for the bully yeah. a lot of times. But it's just, you know, you're not, they're not as nasty, right? And right. so, like, they didn't do it. Angus is really good at football, right? But he's in this, like, uncelebrated position, which, like, I've they got do such lots a, about that. Yeah. And they, oh. well, but, but they do a great job of this. Well, I want to hear all that. So, you know, his, Angus's mom is a truck driver, right? But she's real <laughs> sweet. You know, like, she doesn't, you don't have this, like, she's a great character, and she, but she's, you know, a little bit. Angus's grandpa's marrying this woman that's 30 years younger. And they don't really, I mean, they, they, they play at it a little bit, but they're not, like, they don't make too much of it. They're just kind of like, yeah, this is just it. And know? she it's legit just... loved him. She was, she, and that's oh, what yeah. I love. Yeah. She's, she's like yeah. super broken up, you know? Um, the fact that uh, his grandpa has this like big brother, little brother vibe, and he has there's kind of this non traditional family element. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they're not playing it like Angus just, it, it felt to me like they were, you know, not quite giving you this like all American picture. They're just kind of giving it to you the way that, you know, it might really be. A, a no shit, a, a, a corny moment. I mean, you could call it corny, but when Angus walks to the 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 the, the non speaking chess player that I don't think he ever has a lion in the t- and he goes and he drops that king down like I got tears, brother. I was like, oh, I was so like that hit me. I was dude. like, dude, yeah. like that, and because it's just it's not so much the, the the what his motion it's just the reaction from the guy that he's playing that, that that he always plays with that you could just see he's like, oh shit, I know exactly what happened, yeah. and 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 it. Dude, tears started falling. I was like, damn. And then finally, Melissa, like, reveals that she has an eating disorder, which I'm not saying that there weren't, you know, this was in popular culture to some extent at this time, but it was a little ahead of its time in that way. Like, and it kind of comes out, you know, this is certainly not the way they typically resolve the sort of popular girl, you know, falls for or, you know, at least entertains the sort of like nerdy guy thing. 
And it's kind of plays also perfectly because like he, you know, he has the line, like, he's like, I'm a fat kid. Of course I know what, what, you know, what bulimia <laughs> is. Right. Like, so, so it's, it's like, there's this along the way in a movie that I think has a lot of formulaic elements to it. They don't let you just, they don't, they don't cheap out on a lot of the sort of things that, that, that they, 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 they give you that contradict the, the, what is the typical line. And for me, I think I like that m- almost more than anything else in the movie. But I want to hear the I want to hear the, the the problems. Oh, problems. Well, I mean, some of it I think is going to come out Shag's night body bag. Is is that the same for you, Scotch? Yeah, for the most part. Um, yeah, not to get too specific, but I my biggest my biggest issue was just the fact that you could tell that it was a small budget film, and I wish that they could have had some more takes on a lot of things. Like I just wish that they. There's some some of the interactions I think they just could have done a little better and and again watching this now rather than watching it as a kid and getting caught up in the whole story in the moment I was sitting there just kind of watching it objectively and I was like eh, that wasn't really a great they yeah. could have done better with that you reaction were, you were, football you scene for example I, I'll get more into the football scene but the football scene there's he 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 makes the big hit after the oh, after the interception yeah. and you see the ball immediately let go down and all of a sudden it's popped up into the air a mile and it's like. <laughs> Well, wait a second. If it hit the ground, this is like what happened here. This well, is weird. He he also uh, he threw the ball way downfield, like and it, and yeah. it, it, it went all the way back, like forty yards in the air, back to where he was standing as a quarterback. <laughs> a little weird. Well, yeah. not to mention the fact that they left Angus running, and they go to all the, they all go to Rick and just celebrate, and like, Wah! and they just leave him right there, and it was like. Yeah, there's really? no, that's, I, I get into that. That's that's <laughs> we're, now we're in my body bag territory. So we, um, we will get there. Yeah, so 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 for me, like if I have to pick, I, the, I don't think I'd ever really like noticed this uh, before. But there's some issues with the way that like the, there's some things I like about his friendship with Troy, mm. but there's some weirdness for me about the way that like they create the plot tension. Well, yeah, he just kind of explodes on Troy a couple times with really no kind of reasoning, and it's just like it's well, kind of weird. Well, and well, but Troy also like coughs up the tape with no obvious like incentive to do so. Right, I didn't feel like it was enough to make him completely yeah. betray his trust by giving over the tape. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, it, so that whole thing was just really kind of odd. To me. And for, and, and I think it, that you know? that does get to that like you know there are things they do in this movie to move the plot at times. That are the parts that I think are, are the, the weakest parts. Yeah. Right. Now, so, something else that we haven't really talked about. There was a part that was completely cut out of this film, right? And There's there, a that, lot, that, actually. That, that was his, that... his dad, right? Who, who, yes. There's this whole storyline where his dad was homosexual. And so, well, in, in, in fact, I think there was the original storyline is. And Tony, you said you read the. the yeah, the I did story. have a chance. And basically, the, Angus is. Uh, he was obviously he was born, but basically both his mother and father discovered that, well, they wanted to go in a different direction and they both met people of the same sex. So basically he had two moms and two dads Okay, in, oh. the, in the original short story. Yeah. Right. So for, for the early, I mean, early 90s, that's that's I mean, that would very have been much more but, radical. Yeah. Than, right. Right. But I think they so they filmed, you know, the storyline. They ended up cutting it out later. I don't know if it was test audiences that made him want to cut it or, yeah, or fear at the time. Maybe the homosexual part was what, whatever. They ended up cutting it out, and I'm wondering if some of the things that I felt as far as the movie not quite making sense were edits they had to make to cut those things out. I, but I don't know. I don't know how much, how big that part was in the original so, cut. So, so they definitely, he definitely had a, I think, a dad that was gay in right. the original. So right. I don't know that they, whether or not Kathy Bates' character was gay or whether they commented right. on it, but they definitely kept that part of it and then cut it very late and had to reshoot some scenes. I think with George C. Scott to like fill that in and there's even right there's a line that's left over from this which i never understood until i sort of did a little more research and it's she's 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 arguing with uh with ivan kathy bates and and george c scott's characters are arguing and she says like i want don't want him to have to like i think it's you know to live under the shadow like of who his family is or something like that and you're like what is that i don't that makes no sense in the context and it's just like it's a leftover line right like who cares who cares that your mom's a truck driver yeah that's not that big a deal (laughs) but there was so much more yeah yeah so so i think there is some of that i I had read that they cut as much as like half the movie right not long before and on the other hand right and i mean i i'll 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 watch the shit out of the rest of that if you give it to me. I, in fact, I think on the early TNT like releases of it, there were some of those 
cut scenes were in them. And I but but I appreciate a ninety minute quick like. Look, I was just gonna yeah. say yeah. that yeah. Like, like it's in oh, and yeah. out, man. And 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 for me, there are some weak spots, but there's a lot. Like you said, there there it's it's interrupted a lot by great stuff. And in and, and the narration, some people hate narration or whatever. I, I think it's okay. Like it, it, it does what it needs to do. And, and the fact that it's not like he's supposed to be like an old man looking back on his life. It's just like, basically he's narrating it like almost in real time, which is right. kind of interesting that it's like, he's basically narrating it that night after, uh, uh, he, he, he basically, uh, uh goes to the dance and, and all that stuff. Now being small town high school kids and, and going through, proms and stuff like that and football games friday nights and stuff that jv game has the full marching band and like they act like it's like like the yeah, the varsity, varsity game yeah. yeah and as soon as they saw all of a sudden he's like oh our, our jv lineman i was like wait that wasn't a varsity game <laughs> like, i was immediately yeah. like wait what the fuck and then they have a whole freshman meeting and awards and they're gonna have a freshman like king and queen prom which is like a bit like that doesn't that shit doesn't happen that, that, you don't I mean, have a you know what? You just weren't invited. So, so you, <laughs> is that what? It, oh, it was only the guys with the great physiques. If, if you were in really great shape, they, they invited you. <laughs> well, when I read the story, they actually the story said it in senior year. Okay. Um, so I mean, that's probably where they missed it. But the fact is, the story was like they it was a senior winter ball winner queen and there was a scene uh, he was on the varsity team why and all would that. they switch it to I, wonder, I had no yeah. idea yeah. but yeah that the original story had set it in the senior year of high school well okay well one is 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 the shermanator would not definitely <laughs> fit because he looks like he's <laughs> like a fourth grader uh, yeah I, I, you know oh, yeah. i knew i knew a few dudes that were not much bigger <laughs> yeah, than that okay we that, that's arguable but i'm saying if it was a senior year that's that would be it's weird. not believable yeah right. and then he definitely looks a little young so i don't it, he would be tough to believe as like a senior Mm-hmm. So yeah, but he doesn't have to be a senior too. He can just be his buddy. He can be a freshman. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm saying even yeah. even if if uh, I think Angus was Angus a senior, could like pass be for a senior, Angus dude. could be a senior. Do you know high school kids now? I'm telling you. I mean, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I want to point something out. So Tony earlier was talking about the fact that uh, he, you know, like this movie kind of gave him some confidence and like it it kind of helped him with the like I don't give a shit what other people think. And earlier today, Tony shared with me something that is a real, like, you might say, truly etched, permanently stamped example of this confidence. Tony, oh could you, can you show him? Uh, I'd like you to show your, your newest tattoo and you guys can describe it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show it to these guys. Right oh, here, so. no. So for the All record. Right. He's oh, got- wait. Oh, I thought you were showing me your sunburn. <laughs> that, too. Yes, I did get that California. Nice California I saying, I, Yeah, I thought you got a nice little uh, West Coast. Uh, I, I got them oh, yeah. 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 Check yeah. out this farmer's tan. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 oh, yeah. so let, the, let the non-visual record show right. that he's got a big ampersand, yeah. which is an and sun, uh, yeah. on his on his uh, left uh, like upper left. arm. Upper arm, yes. Tony, could you please tell them uh, <laughs> what the ampersand stands for? So the ampersand is basically, it is a regional pizza chain on the East Coast uh, called Ann Pizza and stretches from New York City down to D.C. where it was actually founded. And actually, uh, I was a big fan since the beginning. They opened their first shop on H Street in Washington, D.C. And uh, I had been a big fan. Um, they had been known to give like do some really gimmicky things when they first opened up their stores. And that included doing tattoos on anybody that were willing to do it, and they would, in turn, give them free pizza for a year. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping so badly that you got something. but I hope you weren't just like, I'm a big fan of the pizza spot. No, no. I'm so glad that you got some good shit. I I mean, they literally paid for that tattoo, and they gave me free pizza for a year just so that way I can go ahead and – you know, advertise it on my arm and say, hey, I got it from this company. So, and pizza, I hope you're listening. Or if somebody knows what I'm talking about, spread it around. A shout out. I'd love for some more free pizza, you know? Yeah. What, what so, kind of pizza are we talking about? We, we, uh, what, what's their style? Like, what's their... So, it's basically, it's like a flatbread pizza. It's, like, very quick. It's a, it's a fast, casual concept where you actually... They'll they'll stretch out the dough. They'll put your sauce. They'll put your toppings as many as you'd like, and they'll run it through a heat like a heat. So oven. it's Quiznos for pizza, basically. Yes, <laughs> it is Quiznos for I, pizza. I don't say that like in a well, good way. I, 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 I mean, it's, it's better quality than Quiznos, but it is definitely a lot better quality pizza. And they uh, they definitely okay. 
are I'm, I am still customer of them. They have locations in my home city of Baltimore right now. So, well, I want to let the record show that if Roundtable wants me to tattoo their logo on my <laughs> arm for a year's worth of free pizzas, yeah. I'm fucking in. Okay? Roundtable, so you just call me up. hit us up. If you're connected with them for sure. So Scotch, I have, a, I have a question, real quick, because I've always been curious about a for a year thing. Yes. So, what does free pizza for a year mean? Does that mean so essentially they loaded about. Six hundred dollars, which is basically equivalent to one pizza a week. Okay, got uh, it. So you get so, fifty-two yeah. pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so I was saying when he showed me that, I was like, I, you know, especially with the ampersand, because like that's kind of a cool symbol that you could like, you know, it could mean anything. Right. It's not like a like a pizza with like a clown a slice of pizza like a clown face. In the well, he could, also, he could also put he and his wife's name, like if he <laughs> yeah. wanted to kind of fix it's a total it. Like, yeah. 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 But in this case, it was basically <laughs> locales of where you know, basically that had meaning to me. I have the the stars and bars which is basically the flag of washington dc and i also have the uh, the star uh representing my home state of texas nice uh the ampersand is basically it is going to be something that that is meaningful as i am going to add an additional tattoo at that point so plus let's be honest pizza is delicious oh pizza is i'll basically basically do anything for all right let's just put that out there i put the what what would be on the bvk pizza well i was just gonna say i put the bvk logo as a tramp stamp (laughs) (laughs) and you guys let me Come and co-host. So. Sure. What made you do that? Uh, uh, so you, had, you had no say in that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So here's the thing. I haven't talked yet about this because, like, I'm trying to keep it under wraps. I'm trying to keep myself contained. We've got a pretty cool guest for drinking with mm. to sub out the director. Do we? We do. And I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to make you wait. I'm going to make you listen to our sponsors, and I'm going to make you sit there and just wonder who is it who's going to be on you mean it's not going to be in the in the title of the episode here's what i'm going to say if (laughs) (laughs) shut up brad (laughs) shut up brad well here's what i'm going to say for so far and we had david ann spawn who was the director of of hoosiers one of my favorite films and rudy and rudy this is my favorite guest we've had in terms of being like kind of geeked out by it. David, if you're still listening to this, man, if you still listen to the pod, we love you, brother. You're a I, Nate, really Nate is a traitor. Nate is an absolute <laughs> traitor. I don't know about this other guy yet. We will see what happens. <laughs> All right. So that's what we've got coming up. Hang around and see who we're drinking with next. All right. We are back and we're drinking. As we usually are at this time. Uh, we talk about uh, what we're drinking, and so I'm going to start. I have my signature Diet Pepsi and Grenadine. I don't even have any bourbon in it. Well, tonight. you just don't have enough ice cubes. I, I, if you I, guys, I, it's I 104 say, four degrees out I, here right I, I didn't now. Because I, I didn't even bother. I put in some ice, and it melted. It just, it's just like water and Grenadine at this point. Yeah, so, that's kind of a mess. Yeah, it's no, no Grenadine, just Diet? No, I got Grenadine. I just don't have any of the fuel. I got no uh, bourbon in no it. No bourbon, okay. Yeah, all right, so. I am sipping on, you know, normally when it's nice and hot, which it is today, um, people like light beers, and I'm sitting here drinking just this nice, thick, dark porter, <laughs> which... It's li- it's literally making me sweat, like, right. watching you drink yeah. that beer. Um, but I love a good porter, and I, it's icy cold, and this is from my last call. It's their uh, Joe Cubano, and um, I, I did a show with them recently, and it was so great, and everybody's so cool down there, and they had three, four packs left in the fridge, and I got the last three, four packs. And so yeah, boy. I thought I'd enjoy it. And That's because you played the, sh- the your little live show there. Huh? Live show, yeah. It yeah, was, dude, you gotta you keep an eye out on scotchbeck.com and on his socials because he plays uh, Last Call Brewing regularly and the shows are awesome. It's 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 a mix of his own stuff mixed with some of the just most random covers you can ever imagine. I, I, I know we had some Depeche Mode, we had some uh, AHA, <laughs> we had a little Britney Spears, mm-hmm. all solo yeah. covers from Mr. Scotchbeck. I, I, I literally won't go to one of his shows if he does not play baby hit me one more time i just won't do it it's become it's become a staple it's yeah. it's part of the set all right brad what do you got i have also i'm drinking from some last call brewing but i'm actually drinking out of the uh, the, the tap over the old here kager. I'm, I'm drinking some karate in the garage okay. uh you know that that double hazy that is delicious and you know you got to watch out for those kicks because it will kick you in the face if you drink a couple too many <laughs> so be careful with it but enjoy it because it's tasting on a on a day like this you need a nice cold refreshment yeah, so last it's, call it's still it's like it's seven o'clock it's like 114 out here yeah it's it's, it's pretty miserable. wild pretty wild all right tony what, what do you got so uh, being the guest judge, you know, 
I come from all the way on the East Coast, and I have never tried the BBK IPA. Boom. You know, I had to do it. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, being a big Bev super fan and whatnot. There is no reason for me not to show up here and think that I could not get a BBK IPA. So, so, so of the top five things that you ever put in your mouth, where does this fall in that ranking? Oh, it falls... Pretty high. Pretty high. Okay, we'll it's, go. It's we'll high up we'll there. just go with number two. Okay, that's great. cool. Yeah, number um, two. I okay. will say that. I mean, that those those BBK IPAs could probably be sold on eBay for. I mean, probably a hundred dollar a right. pop. I'm thinking at least. And the, and the cool thing was, we we both brought one tonight for him. <laughs> <laughs> we, everybody that had their got out into their secret stash because I mean right. BBK just, IPA just guys, it's some, no just, longer it's no longer available. Yeah. But we're hoping to get the uh, last it. call brewing to bring it back soon because you know. The, the fans are, are clamoring for it. So, so as always, uh, the Drinking With section is, is sponsored by Last Call Brewing in Oakdale, California. You should check that out. Um, okay, so I teased it a little. I, did, I told you in the intro that uh, we had kind of a cool Drinking With guest, and I didn't tell you who it was. And I didn't even tell you what this was called yet because you are just not going to fucking believe it. We are drinking with Charlie Talbert, who, for those of the uninitiated, is Angus in Angus. And I am pretty much just losing my mind right now. So, Charlie, welcome to the pod, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> oh, dude, I seriously have a permagrant right now. So, so, Charlie, are you drinking anything? What do you got? You got you. you go yeah, I'm drinking in my inhibitions, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's best, let me man. tell you, it's got some head on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love it, dude. Mm. So I'm drinking nothing because they did not prepare me to drink. So. Uh, I did. Uh, we did. We, to- we totally, we totally uh, blindsided. Uh, that's, that's pretty terrible. Uh, Bad planning um, on our part, as usual. He just, he just gave us double birds, by the way. You were looking down, and, and he gave and us. He, a, he threw some birds at. Me. I, I knew I couldn't handle it. So I, I, I didn't I've been, fl- been double birded by Charlie Talbert. That's great. Angus double birded. This, see, this is this is not Nathan's fault though, because he reached out like literally, literally today. Today. And I just on Sundays I go through and I check messages that are in my block box. You know, like the people that aren't friends. Yet or whatever it's just, and, all, and, you like delete all the like the dick pics and stuff and like all that stuff yeah yeah delete them yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he's like yeah i delete them definitely. i definitely don't save them anywhere on my computer um, you would think with this mustache that i wouldn't delete them but i do uh, <laughs> say, I, love, yeah. I love that mustache but you know what i'm actually like the worst wisconsin or ever I'm, I'm originally from kenosha wisconsin i'm more of a steelers fan i can't stand beer and cheese kills my stomach i don't know what the hell wow. so I'm is, just, is that here. why they kicked you out and they were like go just go, go, go get out of here and go to louisiana or something but i'm in new orleans so you would think i'd be drinking something at all fucking time, right? <laughs> all right so i want to start by asking this and, and I, I i you can tell us to fuck off if you've told this story too many times but if you're willing will you just give us the like give it to us cold tell us how you came to be angus because it's your first movie and prior to that, I, I understand you weren't you weren't really an actor, um, and I might I be like wrong. To, I, I would to... like to stop with this question. Okay. And uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, man. He's, not... like, yeah, sure. He's like, yeah, fuck off. Well, let's get next. <laughs> no, 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 man, not at all. I, uh, dude, it's super simple. Just you know, a uh, fat kid using his comedy and his wits to get him by. Of course, there's a girl that I knew uh, working at the Wendy's in Lake Forest, Illinois. Wendy's like it's it's like midnight and I'm cracking jokes. I, I would just come back from. Uh, so wait, you're cracking. You're like in line. Like you're on the you're on the customer side of the counter. You're rolled in at like midnight. And you're <laughs> Look to... at me. Of course I was on the customer <laughs> side. Of yeah. Yeah. You, you, nobody was going to let you operate or cash register at that point. Okay, got it. So so you're on the customer side. You got this girl. You 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 have the hots for. So you're like, what am I going to do? But make this chick just laugh until she uh, she gets gets kind of into me. No, no, you, you know, I, 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 she wasn't somebody I was like super into. It was just something where I'm laying down the groundwork where she goes back to her friends and goes, you know, I like that, Charlie. It's Plant funny. the seed. I like it. <laughs> you yeah. know? Okay. Um, it, yeah. And then this, uh, this guy comes up to me and, and, and I was wearing a cycling outfit or, you know, I, I, I don't think I was right. I think it was, I can't remember what I was doing, but, uh, it's basically like a spandex shirt with logos and stuff on it. Yeah. And, uh, everybody's laughing it's like midnight and everybody's cracking up and there's a 31 flavors and a wendy's and everybody's i mean people i don't know people that shouldn't be laughing are laughing and <laughs> and this guy comes up to me and he's like hey man you're pretty funny you you want to be in a movie and i was like are you hitting on me man <laughs> 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 you know i'm all bowing up i'm like you're hitting on me <laughs> i'm uncomfortable with myself and um 
And you're how old He's is this? Like, so you're 17 at this time. Is that right? 16? Nah, 17? dude. I'm like 15. Man. 15. Oh, yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah. And this guy goes, hey, you, you, you know, I, I, want, I want you to be in a movie. And I was like, he's like, why would you say that? I said, well, listen, it's near Chicago. It's 12 o'clock at night. You're a grown man alone. I'm a <laughs> guy with kids. And you want me to be in a movie. You know, I'm like, okay, what's going on? You know, and it came, yeah. the, the casting is tonight, right? <laughs> yeah. he's, all, he's all, you're soundstage in my van right now. <laughs> he's like, I got a frosty. <laughs> So I got the part. So, uh, no, so, so yeah, man. So he goes, dude. Yeah, I was a director. He pulls out his wallet, and I can see like he's got American Express. He's got credit cards, which nobody in my family had at the time. And I'm like, okay, so this guy's responsible at least. And he's For like, real? he's like, yeah, he's like, I directed a movie, and then, you know, it's like '94, you know. And he's like, I directed a movie called Space Invaders. You ever see it? I wrote, and directed. I was like, I love Space Invaders. Yeah, man, you're the dude. And he's like, yeah, and uh, you know, and. That that was that was it. I I took it back to the table and I, I introduced him to my chaperone Tony and and it was a really good friend of mine. And he was like, okay, cool. You know, all his parents know or his mom know. And I go back home and I'm like, it's like now one thirty. I'm like, mom, I'm gonna be in a movie. And she's like, shut the fuck up and go to bed. Like, okay. So you've been, you been drinking. You've been drinking. Were you was Tony yeah. letting you drink again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, so. Yeah, man. So the, he's like, yeah, I want you to come down on Wednesday to um, the uh, Planet Hollywood in Chicago. And there's a gal there who's a casting director. We'll meet in her office. She's uh, She did Rudy. I don't know if you're familiar with that movie. And it was Jane Alderman. I was like, yeah, I love yeah. Rudy. Man, that's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, like, I would have been in this guy's van in, like, no time. <laughs> like, like, you, know, you got candy. I love candy. He's, all the, <laughs> he's, he's using all the right lines. He's just, he's working. Yeah. Uh. You need a kidney? I got two of them. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm in my stand-up mode right now. Yeah, you know, you, know, you, keep, you know, we're we're a good venue for that. You just keep rolling. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, so I, I just, uh, so, yeah, I went, I, Told my mom and and Tony came by and let her know it was all legit and I went down there and I, I just like these big ass seats and I was like okay they're expecting fat kids cool cool and then this fat kid walks out and I'm like he looks like me I'm in the right place okay you know and I roll into the room and it's just dark like if Mr Burns office was a real place that's what this place was, it was like all dark <laughs> cherry wood and I'm like all right this this is scary you know it's just me and my mom's outside or whatever and. And there's a little light in the corner and a little area for me to stand. And he's at his desk kind of turned sideways or her desk. And, and uh, he goes, all right, we're going to, we're going to read your sides. And I was like, what the fuck's his sides? <laughs> and he goes, and it's like a 15 year old kid who would, you know, when you're not, you're, you're, you're a director and you just hear an actor go, fuck you talking about man. <laughs> you know, he, he kind of shoots up. He goes, Oh, you're the kid. You're the kid. I met it with. I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, Oh, uh, he's like, sides are like a mini script. He's like, you don't have them, sir. So he has me, uh, you know, I tell him what I, what my life is like and how I pied over this girl, blah, 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 which is perfect because it fits the story. And, right. and and I told him that I could do impressions. And he's like, what do you do? I said, I do like Elvis, Goofy. I do Jim Morris. And he goes, show me Jim Morris. And I was like, <laughs> cool. And I just ran into the corner and shoved my face into it. And I was just like. Like, okay, that's pretty that's pretty crazy for like a 15 year old kid to realize what he's doing and uh he goes man i'm gonna give you some sides and i want you to study these for a week and i want you to come back and read with jay and i, I gotta go back to la and i was like when there goes that i'm not gonna get that and, but for a whole week man i sat on my porch in a rocker just learning my lines and it's a scene with grandpa you know yeah and, and about superman's not brave and i'm just learning that and there was another scene and and then I went in and I, I rocked it. And then I, I didn't hear anything for like two weeks. And I got a call and, they, they, and it was Patrick. And he was like, Patrick Reed Johnson. He's like, dude, we're going to fly out to LA. We're going to give you money. We're going to fly a first class. We're going to put you up in Santa Monica right on the pier. And then we're going to have you read with some other kids. And I was like, dude, that sounds way better than what I thought you were going to do. With the so yeah, let's go. Uh, and, and so, yeah, man. So, boom, I, 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 I the first building I go, I go to this building and i i, I see Whoopi goldberg walking out and it, unbeknownst to me a young ethan plea and all these different people and, and and it was just really cool and i go into this room and they bring in chris owen uh from america pie and yeah. uh and angus and, and he he he's sitting there and 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 i'm walking by and i see ariana richard's face on a computer screen and, yeah. and i'm like oh she's cute this space invaders girl you know 
I'm just geeking out. And right. Richard Hicks is a casting associate and Ronnie Yasko. And they, they put us in this room. And they're like, hey, guys, can you hang out here for a minute? We're going to read you and just all that. I was like, sweet. So I'm sitting there. And I don't know this, but there's a camera running. And they're all in the other room watching us. Right. We have no clue. Just stick you in. And they're like, you're in an experiment. We just didn't tell you about it. So that's cool. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, man, we, did, we, we were finishing each other jokes and have a good time. They come back in. They're like, Listen, we're not going to do this today. We decided we're going to give you the weekend uh, to maybe hang out, work together. In fact, we're going to give you $200 a piece and send you to Disneyland to see if you get along. And I was like, <laughs> who the fuck's not going to get along in the happiest place on earth for $200? That and Chris is like, shut up, dude. Shut up, dude. So I was like, okay. So we, we, we went to Disneyland. I had a great time. Came back, and then uh, they brought Vanderbeek in. And, and it was weird because Chris and I immediately knew we didn't like him because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't in the realm of us, but yeah. we knew we, he was a great guy, but we knew that there was a certain thing we had to represent because it was a movie and we could feel like where to go and really quick like, with the, with the like, yeah. You're just like, so, you're, you're, that too, was it, you're, man. you're way too good looking. Fuck you. And just like immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I he knew the dynamic when they brought him in yeah, and yeah. I knew from reading the side sure, what, yeah. what, who he was supposed to be. And uh, and we we all read and had a good time and then and then I went back home and then like like a long time later I get a call from uh, Patrick and he goes hey man I was like hey buddy he goes, I'm so sorry man I was like oh, that's cool I'm I'm used to welfare that's fine <laughs> and he was like and he was like he was like I lo- I was like I love living in the house with all fortune of my cousins this is no it's good. <laughs> And, and he was like, he was like, yeah, man, you're going to be spending the next four months with us. And I was like, what? And, oh my god! <laughs> so, so did, had you did you read the the short story before? Like in this time, had you like read the short story at all, or did you just read what they gave you? Never, heard of it, never heard of it. And then uh, they gave it to me uh, when before I got there. And I'm actually really good friends with Chris Crutcher now. Okay, because uh, we have we have created a treatment for a series and stuff like that. And, I had never read the short story, but I, the original movie was called A Brief Moment in the Life of Angus Petun, oh, yeah. which was the name of his short story. That's so cool. Hey, Charlie, real quick, just a, a quick backup. So we're we're all small town kids. We Brad, up, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> we, we grew up small town, and so it's like I can't imagine, like my, our sophomore year, like 15 years old or so, we were running around just doing dumb shit in orchards and on canal banks and, and just living, you know, just the life of a little small town farm kids. And... I can't imagine just all of a sudden, like, Hollywood's like, hey, we're going to come out and you're going to be living the big life for a second. And, like, what was that like? Like, did you have to, like, let your teachers know or, or did you let your, I mean, just pals from school, you're like, hey, I'm bouncing to, to Hollywood. or like a star in a movie. What, no what was that like as far as, like, having to figure that shit out? Well, if I had really listened closely, Brad, if I really listened closely, the, hey, we're going to bring you out and let you live the big life for a second. If I'd heard that last part, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no man, it was it was it was awesome, dude. I, I I it was I was beat up a lot growing up, you know, and um, I had a really rough childhood, you know, as far as things went. I was living with my grandma at one point, and uh, and it was really nice to come back with a big pocket of na 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 boo boo, and um, having the na 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 boo boo was really great. But no, man, it, 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 they, it, they were all a little shocked and surprised and, and uh, some knew, you know, <laughs> they're like, inevitably, you were going to be that guy. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 it was pretty smooth and they were very accommodating with my schoolwork and stuff like that. And then uh, I, I actually went to each one of the high schools in uh, my hometown, all four of them, because I had different curricular needs because I kept leaving for film and stuff. So I had to go catch a class at this school and catch a class at that school so I could get everything I needed to graduate. On time. And when that came out, I mean, were you just like people, I mean, Angus was a big movie that, that, you know, especially for that, for that crowd, like that age group at that time. So when that movie hits, like, did you, was it, was it like real rush of fame among your peers? No, it was a box office flop. What are you talking about, man? It's terrible. It did nothing. Was I the only was, one? Was, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> all, no, me and all my uh, friends watch that movie. What do you mean? It was terrible, man. Like, made four grand in the bank. I don't know what, I don't know what it made. I came out against, uh, I think it was against Hackers and Bay Pig and the City. There was no way that movie was doing oh. anything tremendous. Uh, what happened to that movie was it ended up getting a tremendous following later. Yeah, maybe, maybe um, that's right. Like, yeah. a ridiculous following later. I mean, I can't, 
I can't tell you. I, I mean, I saw a petition going around with 10,000 simple signatures, and I was like, what, 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 what? And uh, the problem, the reason that movie never came out right away, like on to, uh, to uh, DVD and all that stuff, is Warner Brothers, uh, not Warner Brothers, um, uh, New Line and them only had the music for so long. They didn't have long term yeah. rights for all. Oh, and that yeah. was, I don't know if you know, but that soundtrack crushed. Oh, yeah. And back in the day, yeah. soundtrack, yeah. that's how you get, that's why you wanted to see the movie was the soundtrack. And man, the work they did on the soundtrack, beyond belief, man. I, I still cry when I listen to that thing. Um, but yeah, the, growing up in it, you know, and I, everybody I know saw it, you yeah, know? Right. Um, so in my little world, that was great. You know, I, I mean, it, it was just one of those things. And, and it really, um, it changed me for the better. It changed me for the worse. It, it, it gave me this weird career where, you know, most people in their lifetimes are eight jobs max, Right. You know, eight to nine jobs max just on people that don't work that, you know, uh, that, that, that can't hold a job. And, and you know, I, I, I have to interview for a job almost weekly, <laughs> you know. Right. So it's it's kind of a weird give and take. People always go, you make a lot of money. as the yeah, but you don't understand. You only work so long and then you you use that money to get to the next thing. Right. I mean, I've been very fortunate and no complaints and I've been part of some killer stuff. But, yeah, man, it was a weird dynamic. Uh, I kind of went, I went to college for performing arts okay. um, be, because when I was younger, I would always get cast as a funny fat guy. But the problem is when you shoot a guy like me, I don't have a fat neck. I don't have you know, like to play. I went out for Billy Bob like a million times. I went out for Pacey and Dawson Creek like 12 times. They, they had to pay me for that. And one point it was me and Jackson in a room and they finally just said, Charlie, we don't think you're sexy enough. You know, it's a weird, it's a weird like yeah. blessing and a curse. Right. Yeah. You mean your man Vanderbeek didn't help you out with that? Yeah. Creek what's thing? up with that? It wasn't, no, no. We had, I mean, James and I have great chemistry when we work together, you yeah. know, and, and I even read, for, like I said, I read for Billy Bob. I ended up getting cast as Billy Bob in Varsity Blues, a TV sh- series for MTV, but that was only because I used fishing wire to like, <laughs> you know, yeah. my neck Add some chins there. You know? Yeah. That's tough. Dude, seriously, fishing wire, layer progression of clothes. And I quit for about six years after Art School Confidential, and uh, my buddy Chris Barry from Twelve Years a Slave, Django and Chain. Yeah. It's like, dude, you got to come down to New Orleans. There's, there's there's plenty of work down here. And hell, four days later, I was working on uh, Big Short, and I saw the light. I was like, okay, this was. Yeah. And I'm being cast as a person who had very much like Angus was cast as a person as opposed to a thing. You know, yeah, right, so. right, right. So, so let me ask you this. So, so, so jumping back then to like, you get in there and, and you hadn't had a, a lot of acting experience in that point. So you start to film and you're doing scenes with George C. Scott. And, and I think like, so, so, so I'll admit, right. Like until we tell the pod, I didn't know the story about how you, you had come to be found, right. That I, I didn't realize that. And so, and I kind of was, I realized like I had a, re, I had a kind of, a little bit of a disconnect when I've heard the story because it didn't make sense to me because I have, you know, part of what I love about this movie is some of those scenes. I mean, you talked about like the Superman scene and like there's some you and George C. Scott have such great chemistry in this and he's fucking Patton. I mean, like that's George C. Scott, right? Like, so how is it that you go from somebody that's telling jokes in a Wendy's to like doing some. Keeping up, a Kathy keeping up high George, level George acting Scott. in that time. <laughs> did you did you sell your soul or a couple kidneys to the devil or what happened? <laughs> well, you see, <laughs> no, uh, dude, I, I, I got to tell you, like movies. So being a fat kid growing up, movie and living in a house with so many cousins and all that stuff, and so much trauma in my life. And, and uh, and uh, it's not violent trauma. It's it's sad shit, but it's it's like stuff that made me yeah. me and made me smart ass and all that. And I used to say, film and television, man. Film and television got me through. Made yeah. me laugh when I needed to laugh, cry when I needed to cry. And all these people, I got my own little checklist. People, right. like I've worked with almost everybody in the cast of Real Genius. Almost, you know, a oh. good eighty percent of the people from uh, Animal House. You know, and, and I, I sat in a room with Dave Thomas and, and, and uh, oh, God, Eugene Levy and uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Martin Short and, and, you know, Dave Thomas. Goes, God, doesn't he remind you of candy? 
and do oh. my heart. You know, oh. I, yeah. I got to do a Chris wow. Farley impersonation oh. with Chris Farley about a month before he died because no. I was slated to be his son on his oh. brother's show. I wore his jacket for Beverly Hills Ninja and a few films that Nicotero made, and I just gave that back to Nicotero for the rep gift for Walking Dead. And you know what it is, man? It, it's I got to go into this world, and, and I have the utmost and have always had the utmost respect for performers, and I knew he was General Patton. And the minute George C. Scott gets out of that limo in, in Minneapolis and goes, well, you must be Charlie. And I go, <laughs> General Patton knows my name. <laughs> you know, like, and he's like, oh, just, you know, and then Kathy Bates, you know, to, to Kathy Bates who played my mom. I mean, you had Larry Drake, who yeah. was my father, uh, Dr. Giggles, you know, uh, Dark Man. You, you had Larry Drake and you had Kathy Bates who says, hey, I really want to get to hang out with you and get to know you before we shoot some stuff. I have a dilemma. I've got to pick the cover because I have final say so and my deadline is today. For Dolores Claiborne, if I told you a little bit about the story, would you be able to look at this artwork and tell me which one you think hits you? And I, I said, yeah, and we did for like an hour, and, and she immediately picks up the phone, and I picked the cover for Dolores Claiborne. Oh, that damn, moment, she nice. called the studio and said, this is what it's going to be. And I was like, <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. you, you show up, and you got to dance with Rita Moreno and be yeah. goofy, and you're just like, you know, so I going into it, I had a, the utmost respect. I mean, I, the guy who works with Perry, who works with me on the tuxedo, that's the snack well cookie guy. Like, I know <laughs> yeah. Larry Preston is yes. Doogie Howser's boss. Like, yes. I know yes. where I'm at wow. with yes. your people, you know? Wow. And, and and I'm just like, this is, this, I knew entering that world that it was going to be beautiful and painful at the same time. And it, it's, so, it's so lovely. I relate so hard on all that, Brad, doesn't it? And, and I, and Tony, I mean, what, your class of what, 97, 98? Class of 97. Yeah. So, so like, I bet you guys like, you know, but I relate so hard to this because like, that's, you know, like the snack wells cookie guy. Guy and you know Doogie Howser's boss, like the same shit. Like you know, and, and I kind of you know I I, I don't want to sort of sell it as like you know it wasn't a necessarily a tr trauma coping thing, but it was my childhood. Like I, I you know movies and TV for me were were you know always a way to sort of like you know decompress and connect with things and expand and all that. And so it, I can I can sort of picture myself in those scenarios like. Kathy Bates wants me to pick the cover of it. You know what I mean? Like that's it can't yeah. be. It would be it would be absolutely wild. The Dave Thomas, I'm, I'm Strange Brew was such a huge part of my childhood growing yeah. up that it just like meeting Dave Thomas would be just wild. <laughs> yeah, I we did. Be like this is crazy. <laughs> we did Strange Brew. Uh, well, on I did a movie and... called Who's Your Daddy with him. Oh, oh, I did a movie yeah. called Who's Your Daddy with him, and and you know it, it was and I so I got to spend quite a bit of time him and uh, Colleen Camp who played a vet and Clue, you know, and, and it's. Yep. It, 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 Wayne Newton. I got to sing "Time of the Season" because <laughs> Wayne Newton bought the rights to it, and I got to play, you know, the 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 best friend who goes out with them to the Playboy Mansion s kind of thing. And you know, I I, I, I got to tell you, man, is all the stuff I've done, and uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I danced with Britney Spears one night after I found out <laughs> Mark Posey thought I was cute. You know, like <laughs> I, I, there's things in this business that are just like your mind. Yeah. I got I got 86 from the Playboy Mansion. You know what you gotta do to get eighty six to the Playboy Mansion? Oh, I, I mean, you can tell us right out, now. We would, oh, our, our, it, our fans it. would love to hear that story. Oh, my lord! It, it turns out just being really good friends with with Holly. You know, like oh. it, it, it's, it's one of those things where you know. But I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like every bit of that those first moments of walking on the set and doing these scenes have informed everything that I've done for even the times I've really screwed it up, like a really pitched yeah. pooch. Hmm. I did it. It's all great stories. You know, it's, yeah. it, it, yeah. it's really kind of neat to be able to look at the TV and reach in, but then also it's really neat to be able to give that to somebody else and, and let them laugh when they got to laugh and cry when they got to cry. Yeah. And I get so many people that reach out to me that are in different stages of their life or, uh, you know, or where they're, they're at emotionally um, whether it's a high or a super low, and, and it's really a beautiful gift that Patrick gave me by bringing me into that world. And you know, those little moments I got to have the craziness with Patton, and mm -hmm. you know, this and that, and it, it's all because I get to do the same thing for somebody else. Yeah, and the, the, for me, like the Superman line is one that I use as like a teaching moment with my kids, and like, and with other people when I'm sort of like mentoring. I bet it comes into play for me. Once every four or five months, I'm ah, this is this movie, and there's this 
this metaphor and this line and I tell that story and it's like it's you know it's like one of those things where I hold it tight you know because it's it's means so much right it's so 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 valuable and I totally get that you know like that's that's a sort of a, a meaningful one what's the line the, the, it's the it's the it's the met, superman metaphor right so it's it's the you don't know uh, you're not familiar with it yeah you, you, you might want to you want you want to you want to rewatch angus i think <laughs> I haven't seen it. Is it good? <laughs> so Dude, I got to tell you, one of my favorite moments, one of my very first favorite moments after uh, when Angus was coming out, was it was a, on a preview in the movie theater, and there was a girl that I liked, and her all of her friends and a bunch of them didn't like me, and I'm sitting in the theater, and we're watching uh, Mortal Kombat, and the preview for Angus comes on, and I stood up, and I went, ah! <laughs> 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 Dude. Proud of it, but it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just curious. I know your good friend Chris Crutchfield. He wrote a, uh, when he wrote Athletic Shorts. He said that when I Chris come to Crutcher. The... Chris Crutcher. Crutcher. Tony, Chris, go ahead. Crutcher. My my apologies. I screwed that up. All right. I'll, so, edit, I'll edit that shit out. Don't worry. I know, right? <laughs> when I came to the last page of the novel, I present the characters to you, the reader. What happens next? It's up to you. How do you think uh, Angus continued? Once he walked down that street after Melissa Lefevre uh, uh, looked at looked back at him through the window, he probably stopped at McDonald's. <laughs> probably, <laughs> I'm thinking so. <laughs> no, uh, well, I got to tell you, I I, I did uh, I did write uh, with a friend of mine, Jeff Lamb, and then we we did write a treatment for a follow up series. Um, very not too long ago, and now the the director of Angus has it in his hands. Um, cause he has first right of refusal. Um, so I'm not going to divulge too much about that, but I would tell you that it was in real life. It, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's moments you go have them and you go have another, just like grandpa says, Jim, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it just, it just, it hits you as you get older. I'm sure all of us, you think about those moments more now than you did then and you'll just be sitting there and you'll just be like why didn't i do that you know or, <laughs> yeah that was pretty funny that was pretty good i remember when i was a god that night that was great yeah and, you, and then yeah. you're like oh yeah you know and, it, and and that's what it's all about so you know in all honesty i couldn't tell you where he went right after but i could tell you that that moment sat in his mind like so many moments sit in ours for the rest of our life and yeah that's what gets you through those tough times and then ultimately probably became um addicted to you know perpetuates and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know things went downhill but i know yeah. i would tell you in real life that chris owen is still my best friend you know and i created a cartoon over the pandy with him uh, you know I, I you know i had him voice uh uh and it's one of those things where like angus was not too far off from myself except for mm-hmm. i'm not smart uh, book smart. Uh, I'm more street. St- I'm like I'm like anti Angus. I'm street smart Angus. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got this kid. Believe it. Take a joke here. You know, but no, it's 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 one of those things where I, I I I gotta say that he probably just lived on that moment for years, and uh, you know, and made the best of himself. Yeah, I once made a game winning shot at my freshman year of high school, and I basically still live on that moment. Uh, oh my God. I, I feel, I feel it, gets, it, gets sent, it gets sent around every yeah. year on its yeah. anniversary. Oh <laughs> it's referred to affectionately in my family as the shot, as though there's no other shot. And yeah, about once a year, someone shares it on Facebook, and then I act all modest about it. Like, uh, no, that's no big deal. <laughs> it's not, I, I, but, was but, bar- but, I barely even, I shit wasn't even supposed to be my shot, but you know, it's like, you know. But you feel just, it. Oh, I feel you it. You feel it. Well, and, yeah. and, and like to your point, right? Like one of the, you know, it's, I like Tony's question, right? Like thinking about where Angus goes. Cause like you don't really leave that movie. And I never really thought carefully about it, but you're not like, yeah, he ended up marrying Melissa with Le- fever, right? And that's not really the point, right? It's like, it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. He, he, you know, 20 years from then, you know, he may not have seen Melissa Le- fever, but he's like stoked because he's like that one night, like I killed it. And like she was digging me and I was firing and, you know, that was the first of a bunch of moments that like you think back on and, and it is kind of that, right? It's all the moments you have ahead, but it's all those moments you like tell the stories about to your friends and you know, Brad's the king of telling the stories, you know, to 
everybody meets, right? He's got great stories. You know? So it's like, I, but I, get, I get that. I mean, you, so, so the podcast is named, I don't know if you know this, but it's named after a video store that is in, we have a town of like 4,000 people in the central California that we live in and grew up in. And the name of the video store growing up that we all rented our movies, including Angus, was uh, was Bez Video Kingdom. And so yeah, when right. we started the podcast, we we're like, well, what she named this? You know, it's kind of about movies that we love. We, a lot of them we grew up with. Well, we got a name at that, and and it's not only that like the stories of that place, but like on later, our, a friend of ours bought it, and we used to play, you know, N sixty four after Gold hours night. in there, and like you know, reshelf all the porn, which was you know, <laughs> it took a little too long to do and stuff. But you know, it's like it, it, those are the kinds of things. It's like you know, those aren't those are just those like stories you tell that you remember that you you hold on to that like are the are the Angus the Angus you know one moment at a time. That's a, that's like I love the metaphor. So. Let me ask you this, because I, I don't want to steal too much more of your time, but what I do want to know... I have is... nothing going on right now. I don't have any... I... Well, you you got to understand, I'm two hours ahead of you, so you my sure next are. thing is, like, reruns of the Big Bang Theory and sleep, maybe Red Dwarf. <laughs> maybe Red Dwarf, I don't, know. Don't, sleep, I don't know. don't sleep on reruns of the Big Bang Theory. I mean, that's that's. Good I've never shit. seen the show before, so I, I just started watching oh, it a few days ago. That's great. I was watching... I, I've been watching Red Dwarf repeatedly for years to go to bed too but i i just was like you know i gotta give these guys some some play because you know they made such a great show and then my buddy i'd give it i did one of the last episodes and i caught that and i was like all right i'll go back and watch it. yeah that's good man yeah. uh so 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 what what's what's going on right now for you what what are you working on and what's coming out soon and i and i, I know the i know the answer to one of those questions that i really want to hear about but i want to know what the what's what's uh charlie talbert gonna gonna show up in our on uh, the next for us I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <tell> you <laughs> yeah, that's one of my least favorite questions. What are you doing next? Oh, what are you not doing? Do anything next? It's like, uh, I got I, I my Lego house and go. I'm watching the Big Bang Bang. <laughs> Reminiscing down time when I had stuff to do. So, um, no, I, I, well, so I just actually, I, I'm working on, um, it's right now, it's, it's untitled, but it's a movie with uh, uh, Sandra O oh and uh, Aquafina, Will Ferrell, Jason Schwartzman. Uh, who are who are those Taylor people? Holland. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, familiar with any of those people. Nope, nobody good, huh? <laughs> and I get to improv, which is really great. Yeah. And, and so I just, you know, I'm working on that right now. And then I, I, I I'm actually just doing finishing some ADR work for a series for HBO Max called uh, Love and Death. Okay. Um, and that stars uh, Elizabeth Olsen, who I worked with on Ice of the Light, and Jesse Clemens, uh, Patrick Fugit from uh, uh, Almost Famous, dude, and uh, we're, Kristen we're, Ritter. We're big Almost Famous It's good. It, Tom, Tom Pelfrey, you know, so it, it's a really great cast. And, and I got to work in Texas, uh, you know, for you know for about three or four months uh, and just got back from doing that march. And, you know, I've got uh, a couple other little things here. I, I've... I've written a pilot uh, that I'm getting a treatment for so I can ship it off to uh, uh, it's a book that a fan of Angus like a fan made this action figure figure they're called yeah. Joyful. this guy wrote a book called uh, Andy gets con so I wrote a I got the rights to that for a few years and I wrote a pilot to it and and I want to get that to Nick Frost because I want him to star in it even though the guy wants me to be in it I was like no I want Nick Frost yeah yeah and uh, and now I'm uh, I, I built this cartoon that's uh, I believe it's an adult or Cartoon Network right now and they're looking at it so but you know I got stuff I'm doing you got a bunch of stuff, got a stuff. Bunch of stuff. so, so, so you word, word on the street is though that you've got a part in Where the Crawdads Sing which is coming out really soon I do <laughs> you guys need to go see Where the Crawdads Sing oh my god if you haven't read that book Dilio Owens man I cried like nobody's business. And that's what I'm talking. Same thing with movies, you know, this movie. And I, the book ended the way I wanted the book to end. And I still cried. Yeah. And uh, I got an audition for this, this, this movie. And Libby Newman was uh, directing. And I, I never thought in a million years that I'd be working with David Strathairn. And, and it was, it was just fantastic, man. Yeah. I, I got to pop in there. And the character I play isn't someone from the book. He's an amalgamation of okay. some characters. Uh, and it's very brief, it's very fun, but it's very like, holy God, I'm sitting here right now doing this yeah. on this project. I mean, I've been super fortunate, man. I mean, I got to work on The Watchmen, uh, I, you know, with Regina King and Giovanni Depo, and I got to work uh, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Underground Railroad with 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 Barry Jenkins and 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 Jessica Yu, who's uh, an 
Oscar-winning director uh, for Breathing Lessons in '96. If you haven't seen that documentary, see that movie. Um, and and I, I mean, I've worked with Fred Wolf. I've worked with Adam McKay. Now, oh, I mean, yeah. the, I cannot tell you like how excited I was to get on with the Crawdads thing. I was just like, this is happening. And it yeah. comes out July 15th. And it's, it's such a beautiful story and living in the South for as long as I have now. And I, you know, I live here, I live in LA and I live in New York. So I kind of bounce back and forth and, and I, and I don't like to fly. So I'm always driving. So I'm there for quite some time wherever I'm at. And I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's one of the most crushingly, brilliant stories that I've got to be a part of. And you know, I, I hope you guys, and I know you'll thoroughly enjoy it, but I hope you'll see if it comes out in theaters. We, we absolutely will. And, and I was, so when we kind of, we were of course giddy and sharing the news around with our family uh, that you were coming on today and, and, and they're all okay. So they, everybody starts, you know, throwing, j- jumping on IMDb and immediately Tony, <laughs> Tony's wife and my wife were, you know, were like, he's in the, he's, he, you know that he's coming out and you know we're and where the crowd is saying you know, you know he's going to be in that right like they're freaking out they're like <laughs> angus schmangus like let's talk about the, the real <laughs> yeah. the real deal here so so i mean I, I have a feeling that whether we like it or not and i think we're going to like it we're going to see that movie when it comes oh, yeah. out i think there's a whole lot of mo- momentum uh to, to, to get you there. will fall in love with daisy edgar jones and i, and I gotta tell you it's it's it, what I saw when I went in to do ADR and stuff like that, because they added in a, a couple of extra lines for me, and I was like, okay. And I went in, and I just looked at the cinematography of this, and I knew when I was set, when I was on set, yeah. but it was something beautiful. But when I saw it on the screen doing ADR, which is voiceover, I, I was just like, this is beautiful. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> I wanted to hug the microphone because. You know, COVID time is you're still, you know, yeah, there's right. protocols and stuff. So I'm in this little isolated booth going, can I just hug the mic? Can I just... <laughs> <laughs> you nice. know, I, I can't, I can't complain. And I, I got to tell you that moving here, uh, you know, and starting getting back into the business here, because I did stand up for about uh, oof, two years or so in Los Angeles. And, Most, and was it mostly like at Wendy's and McDonald's lobbies or just, no, it was no, like not, not, back, not back to your roots. No, <laughs> no, no it's like, it was the improv it was the comedy store in yeah, sunset. Man. I used the Angus tout to get me in there very quickly. And, and, and I wore like the same outfit. Like, you know, I got into stand up. My, my buddy, yeah. Dan Smith, he, he runs a uh, rockstar games overseas, you know, and like his game with his team is like red, red, red dead redemption two and all that stuff. And yeah. I met him years ago when I was doing my own show for CBS mobile called the Charlotte Howard show. And he was working on a Coolio show. And I didn't know this at the time. But he then moves into my complex, you know, like, I think it's like two years later. And we realize, oh, my God, I know you. And I like you. And you're cool people. <laughs> and and so one night, I fall asleep. This is like a week after my divorce went through. I'll explain that later. Um, so then my summer dissolution. And I, I woke up and I was like, I got five minutes of funny. And my room is half mirrors. I'm completely naked. And I immediately stand up. And I do the comedy routine to myself. <laughs> and I'm like, this is amazing. So I grab a towel. I throw it over my junk. I run across the courtyard. And I'm like, Dad! Dad! And he's like, what's up? I was like, I got five minutes, man. Let's make it funny. And we, we did. And, and I was like, look. And I was running uh, Joseph Bay Bank Clothiers. I was running 26 stores for loss prevention. You know? And I, I was a habit usher. I've never not been working. I just, I, for me, my mentality has always been, a person, not a person, unless they're working and doing something, being, you know. Yeah. And so I, I did that, and I loved Haberdashery because it was the same as film. I was there for the most important moments of your life, you know, your weddings, your funerals, et cetera, you know, and you're there, and you're part of it, and you're making them feel better about what's what. And yeah. so I was like, yeah, I can do that as opposed to the acting. I was like, no more acting. I'm going to have, I'm going to get a wife. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to have a baby because you do that. You go, I'm going to get a wife. I'm going to be, you yeah. know, and you go to the store and you get stuff away. Uh, no, so I, I, <laughs> we're I small town kids. That's, that's what everybody does, <laughs> right? Right. And I found this wonderful person, and we were together. But it was like such a huge age difference. Didn't work out. Long story short, I I I go. You know what a beautiful relationship is? Is you know when you're sitting there and you're looking at a girl, and you're having you're at a restaurant, you're looking at her, and she's looking at you, and you know you're having that intimate moment. She's right there. 10 or 15 tables away with her husband and kids. And, you know, and, and I had this whole thing. And, and so Dan and I, man, we sat there and we rode and we rode and we rode and we rode. And, and I went out and did 30 open mics in the first two weeks just to see yeah. if I liked it doing like sometimes yeah. five a night. 
running for, and it was just phenomenal. I don't even know how I got to this point, but I loved doing stand up. Are, are you still? Are you, <laughs> are you still doing it at all? No, man. I, I I came to New Orleans. I don't know what question led to that answer. I, I don't, we, I don't what, you know what? what time is a flat circle on Bez Video King. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, 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 we'll find, places, find so. it again. <laughs> no, no problems. <laughs> Oh, you're one of those flat timers. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong podcast. <laughs> no, um, no, so yeah, man. So I, I, I did. I, I came to New Orleans. Um, my buddy was working on Django and Chain, Christopher Berry, and he, he and I both worked on it, Your Honor, and and uh, with uh, Brian Cranston. And he, he says, Charlie, you gotta, you gotta come to New Orleans, man. There's tons of work down here. And, and I did, I blind moved, never been here before. And like I said, started working right away, but I wanted to keep doing the comedy. And a friend of mine, uh, Frank Estrada out in LA, he was, uh, he was on the wall at the comedy store now. Congratulations, sir. Yeah. Um, he says, you know, I got a friend, Jeannie Dean down there in New Orleans. She'll get you to the stand up, you know, stand up company down there. You'll have fun. Only problem I had down here with stand up is that was mixed with burlesque shows and almost all st- in fact some guy offered me a full building that he would cover the overhead if we split the door and the bar and i said okay and then i did the comedy down here and the problem is is when you have stand-up comedy and burlesque dancers you have two different audiences in there so you got comedians <laughs> that are like my body's a piece of horrible nothing <laughs> you, know, and, and, you know it's just not the right two audiences so I, and then I realized, I was like, you know what? I don't want to come here and I don't want to start over as an actor trying to be what the mold they were trying to fit me into, which yeah. was the funny fat guy. And I said, let me go down there and be a guy, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. who's got whatever going on. And I knew that I was trading larger parts for smaller roles and bigger projects with people that I really wanted to work with and and really kind of make a difference. <laughs> and so I shot a, I shot the Jesse J music video, Bang Bang, my last silly hurrah in, in my stand-up outfit look. And, and then I got a car and I moved here and, and it just kind of changed from there. So I stayed away from the stand-up comedy. Well, it sounds like it's working out pretty damn well for you. So uh, I'll, 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 I can't I'll, complain. I'm just going to have to try to find your, stand, your stand-up on YouTube, I guess. I wouldn't do that. I, wouldn't do that. <laughs> I don't think any of that really <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie, I, I can't t- seriously, man, I can't tell you much how much we appreciate you coming on and how much of a privilege it is, you know, I, not to sort of overstate here, but like we started doing Bev's Video Kingdom, you know, because we really loved movies and we sort of slowly waded into trying to invite some guests on. And uh, this is sort of my version of, you know, whatever the coolest shit, you know, you got to do. Right. Because this is, you know, this is. You're Angus, man. I mean, I, you know, like, truly, like, this is, you know, I, I, t- 20, 27 years later, you know, I like a movie that has been, you know, in my sort of top 10 for, for my whole life and one that I watch once a year. Oh, thank you. You're fucking Angus. And that's your, and that's, it's cool that you came on and we really appreciate it. I feel like, I feel like that would have been a great line for, for George this guy. Hey, man. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fucking, fucking Angus. Just remember, <laughs> you're fucking Angus. <laughs> you're fucking Angus. You know what? You're right. <laughs> I mean, he basically said that in other words, but yeah. That would have been, that would have been the kicker for sure. <laughs> All right. Hey, that was Charlie Talbert. If you want to see him, uh, keep an eye out for upcoming product for projects, including where the crawdads sing. Uh, and uh, you know what? Thanks for coming. We'll be back. Thanks for having me. I'm still kind of in stunned silence right now, Ooh. except I'm not at all silent because that was fucking awesome. That I mean, was fucking insane. I loved being in his presence. It was, I mean, that was freaking <laughs> Angus, so, fucking Angus. Come on. So, so Tony, oh, you were like, wait, 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 so we were, Tony and I were out with our wives on the boat uh, today. And uh, we were we were like, you know, we get the call that he's going to be on. And Tony's just like total <laughs> starstruck shock because he, he was kind of you're just kind of jacked because you're like, we get to talk about Angus tonight. We really I, I mean, simply it was like I just wanted to talk about Angus because yeah, it was a fucking awesome movie to me. And then but Angus have, shows up. And then <laughs> Angus shows up. And I'm just like, talk to Angus. And I'm just like, 
fuck. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, I was I, the, the way this this kind of went down, and and uh, as he mentioned, like he we basically contacted him today. I'm at a Giants game at the San Francisco Giants game. I'm singing the bleachers uh, with some friends and, and my wife, and my kids, and. I get an Instagram call. I didn't know Instagram calls were an actual thing. And <laughs> I'm looking at this name like, what the fuck is that name? And I had no clue. And so I texted the boys. I'm like, hey, somebody's trying to get a hold of us on Instagram. And they gave me the number. And all of a sudden, Nate's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I messaged uh, I messaged Angus. <laughs> I messaged oh, no. Charlie. Uh, you, I, did not, I did not forget. As soon as you sent it, I was like, that's Angus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dude. I, I, was, I was like, well, I, you know, I've been usually a little better about trying to contact people and stuff. And for some reason, I just hadn't gotten around to it. I've been kind of busy. And so just this morning, I kind of had a moment of clarity. And I was like, you know what? Like, I got to reach out. This is a big one for me. He would be huge to come on. And, you know, you know I got to take a shot even this last minute so i sent it like you know this morning i said hey we're doing one tonight i wonder and he gets back to us and was really cool about it and obviously you just heard it guys i mean he was he what a, what a cool guy like what, what, yeah really interesting really funny and a great story you know like yeah, it kind of seemed like he had good perspective too on it you, you know, know like, like i always say you know you guys have me on here and but i'm a fan first and i just sat back and just enjoyed and just hearing the stories and and watching your just seeing your little smile over there you know? <laughs> God, look at you i mean God, you can't see this everybody but he is I'm so fucking happy I charlie it. and charlie yeah. i and you know what we mean no respect referring to you as angus i mean i i, I hope that's no no disrespect here but charlie you were a blast to have on and, and we really were stoked to uh, have yeah. you on the bvk pod for sure and, and, I, and i think like i'm i'm psyched now to kind of seek him out because i, I really enjoyed like hearing us you know trying to get into different roles and some of the things that he's doing mm -hmm. um i'm like okay like i want to go keep an eye out for what he's up to so maybe you know hopefully a lot of our fans will do the same thing hey and maybe uh he could be a future guest judge or something you know yeah, i'd always love like to have him back yeah, for absolutely. that absolutely uh, all right so i think we have something coming up now what is it called is it a one night stand or do you hit it with a shovel or take it home to mom and dad it's like fuck marry or kill it's shag snack body bag Okay. Oh, just, I, I just <laughs> scotch legit, legit, you know, semi chub every time I hear it. You know what? My my goal when I come up with music is to create chubs. <laughs> the first time it was it was full, just not like to be, you not know, to be weird, on. six to twelve. But it's not, it's but not, now it's now it's just still it's not, it just, it just no, gives just, me a little tingle. I want, I want to create partial chubs. Full chubs would be weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're snag shagging and body bagging. Um, so let's let's kick it off with some shags, and I'm going to let Tony go first here. So what what do you want to shag? And I, you know the deal here. Right? Oh yeah, I, I definitely know the shag here, uh, the deal as far as what the shag is. Because guess what? With Angus, it's got to be the suit. All right, it's got to be oh, it's the plum. plum suit. It's plum. <laughs> all right, that is a moniker that will forever live in my mind. Because as all of you know, I mean, it was true back in 1995, 96, 97. The go-to suit was black. I want black. And yeah. that was there, what there, I There want. was no color. There was no yeah. color, color to it. We had no personality back then when it came to prom suits. No. But here's the thing is that I think Angus, I mean, I'm not sure. It, it's not going to be the movie that sets the precedent, but basically the precedent has been set. You see all these high school homecomings and proms, all with different colored suits. And it's like you wouldn't hear it's plum. All right. They said, let's go for it. That That's what would happen this time. There are a few things that I grudgingly admit that the younger generations do better, but I would say some of the, some of the like confidence in fashion. I, I, I will I'm, say I'm there for it. Some people hate it. I love the sneakers with the, uh, the tuxedo. Oh, I love it too. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. I actually have, I have no problems with that. Dress shoes are uncomfortable as fuck and they suck. And yeah. slip and slide on shit, I'd much rather have a nice, cool little pair of sneakers. So now I actually have a memory of your brother and some of our other friends, like Aaron Piazza and a couple of other... Converse, I, I think right? Jeff Green, they wore the Chuck Taylor yep. Converse All-Stars, oh. black, brand new, with their suits. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. So they rocked that shit. That was, so that was back that's, in... That's old school. That's, yeah, that's back in the, in the aughts. That was 93. 93 that oh, I, when thought they graduated. Was, I thought it was the 1800s oh my word <laughs> <laughs> uh, how old yeah how old are you scott <laughs> I, why do i keep going? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I really but no, no, I, I, well i will say 
definitely Angus, and then of course Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> orange, <laughs> blue, the year before oh, the, the blue yeah. and orange. I mean, if you wanted to be super goofy, you would you could get something crazy like that. But there you go. All right, my shag here is you know what? Not that it's it's semi fairy tale ending, but at the same time, it's not a fairy tale ending. It's not because because they leave it open-ended you don't know what happens post this relationship and you know what i th- this movie watching it it kind of gave me a little smile at the end because there was one person i thought of and we had them on the pod uh, uh lieutenant dan uh in high school i'm not saying lieutenant dan was a was, was a, a, an amazing guy he was also a sci-fi nerd he was also uh, uh just a little odd and weird but he had the hots for a girl that was in in our class that was that was a, a very cool very uh, good looking girl and, and I think at the time like like our senior year there w- would have been a great argument to be made that like she was the most be- that the most people thought she was the most beautiful girl in the class yeah no I I, I would I would not I would not disagree with that at all and and Lieutenant Dan was like he just kind of all of a sudden gained this confidence like you know what I'm gonna yeah. be the nice guy to this girl and eventually you know what he won her over and and they got married and and they've been married, and for they've been 20 married. some years now yeah and yeah. and and it's just an awesome story and it, it kind of reminded me of that and yeah, i was like you I know what this is of it but that's not bad it's not fairy tale ending i mean like like maybe it doesn't work out for angus in the end like and and who knows what direction it actually goes but i like how everything that kind of happens in it it's not too fairy tale i mean it's it's a little fairy tale at times but but at the end it doesn't say oh and they they kiss and they have a big like romantic scene or anything like that it was just kind of like this is cool yeah it maybe was, something happens maybe something doesn't yeah, it, yeah you know, she might like, change her mind the next like, day right. and, and it might be kind of like what charlie said which is you know maybe this is just a memory and it's nothing right. but yeah. i do but there's ambiguity there where you're like you don't know you know like she yeah. they, they may connect you well know? i liked it because it, it was real it was it wasn't the full-on they totally like make out on the porch or whatever yeah. it, it even their open. dancing was awkward. it was it yeah. wasn't oh. like he turned into dance superstar and like impressed <laughs> and right. you know everybody circles around they're clapping for him like it was still kind of awkward and weird right and so it just kind of get that that there was that still that vulnerability about it and and it was still kind of like eh, well the only on practice here. he really had at that point was with a blow-up doll and rita moreno <laughs> all right <laughs> I'm saying, if you get skill if you get some lessons from rita moreno you're gonna learn some shit i assume uh, <laughs> um yeah so my shag has got to be the opening scene with the marching band and as a music guy as a former marching band member against my will in college i think i mentioned that before on a previous pod god damn that thing was just i got goosebumps watching that whole opening sequence and how they just brought in all the horns and slow at first you didn't really kind of pay attention to what was going on also like holy shit the horns are perfect with it and it was such a beautiful just melding of the two things and I, i've watched that opening sequence i think four times since because I because I, I, I watched it one time then like my my uh, direct TV like screwed up and I couldn't I it, like stopped it at the beginning so I had to rewatch it again and then I was like googling an article and it, it the YouTube popped up with that open thing I watched it again goosebumps each time I just love the opening sequence it's so good all right I'm gonna shag a tie because I can't decide so first I'm gonna oh, I thought sh- you're gonna shag the bow tie. Yeah, I want to shag the tie. I love it. It's- I will say, Angus <laughs> tied that bow tie just like instantly and perfectly. Perfect. How the hell did he do that? <laughs> Very smart kid. So <laughs> my body bag. So uh, oh shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shag uh, Green Day. That's one. I mean, I loved Green Day, and you pretty do much you had the time. Just stick it directly into my veins all the time. <laughs> but I'm also gonna shag the. I want to shag the, the like the nuggets of wisdom, like like the, those on their own. The couple of like real the, the two that we've talked about a lot right the superman and the and the sort of screw them those two for sure for me are like yep like i'm gonna i want those those are those come in when they come in handy they're like they're they're super super potent so i love those for the snags but or for the shags but i want to know scott what are you shagging or what are you snagging what are you taking home what am I snagging i'm snagging fat nerds who win <laughs> because yeah. I'm a fat nerd and I want to win. You, you, you have one. I let me just let me just stop you right there. Uh, you think, you've won. Thank you, buddy. I've not not with, not with anything with your, yeah. your band or your or your uh, uh, 10 million views on YouTube or anything like that. I would say 
once you made the BVP, BVK podcast, that yeah, was that's, pretty this much. Is, you're winning. You yeah. won. This no, is you winning. I'm just saying back when I was this age, I didn't feel like a, much of a winner. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, yeah, because when I watched this, I, I, I like I said earlier, it's like this would have been a very important movie to me yeah. when I was that yeah. age. And because it, it, it almost is like. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a movie that's horrible to look back at now, but Revenge of the Nerds at the time, we had this rallying cry for nerds and, you know, mm-hmm. all this stuff before Big Bang Theory made nerds cool. Right. You know, and this is the kind of thing for big dudes. It's like, look, it, you can fucking be great and you can do good things and you can actually get the girl at the end, you know. Yeah. And, and so I just love the feel because, like, you know, watching this film... I, you know, I liked it at the beginning. In the middle, it was kind of after a while. I was like, eh, okay, let's just get this over with. Let me get to the happy ending. Hopefully, it's a happy ending. And it delivered what I wanted. And I love the fact that he stood up to him. He said, look, we're normal. You know, Vanderbeek, you can go fuck yourself. And it was great. So <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. And it's weird because teen comedies, this is almost like kind of kicks off a resurgence because I don't remember – too many really important like early 90s teen comedies i mean in the early 90s right it, you know the sort of like misanthropic grunge feel kind of takes over everything right there, there's some i don't know if they're exactly high school but like there's reality bites is kind of like a young person's movie it's, yeah it's little, right out of high school and, empire uh, records yeah yeah oh, that's a empire, good, really yeah. good call so it's, it doesn't have the same feel to it it's like the, the alternative movement kind of grabs on to this genre too yeah it's like it's like, it's like early 20s like that that becomes like the the, the kind of where they're doing those comedies well, well and even the high school like i think empire records no, that, empire, em, uh, they're all they're probably late teen maybe college age yeah well anyway but i i agree that it grabs it, it somehow shifts for a minute and this does yeah. like this is a, a pickup for that so yeah and then it definitely gets uh, uh, going with american pie and, and stuff yeah. like that oh, afterwards yeah. um my snag Kathy Bates. And you know what? I've seen Kathy Bates in a lot of things, and I always love her. And you know what? She is an all-time movie mom. Because as much as, as she's a mess in The Waterboy as Bobby Boucher's mom, this is an all-time movie mom. Like, she is so supportive. Yeah, I mean, perfect. when she has some of those the, those conversations, uh, uh, particularly with, I think it was Ivan, where she basically says, like, I went through that shit. And, like, like, yeah. like just she kind of, like, shows her emotion. That stuff's powerful. Like, that oh, yeah. was some uh, – yeah. re- that's the stuff that hit me in this movie that really made me feel like, you know what, there's there's a lot more to this movie than just kind of a dumb teen comedy. Like, there's some legit, like, emotion here. And Kathy Bates brings it out. And Kathy Bates is an amazing actress. And uh, I'm just surprised I, I had not seen this. And, and I, I was very – Impressed Please. with her performance. You're, wish, you're welcome. I wish there was. I wish there was more of her. <laughs> Thank in you, it. Tony. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I just. I just wish there was more of her in it. And um, yeah, it just her reaction after he, the, the, Grandpa died was a little bit odd to me too. Like when Angus is crying on the stairs, and it was just kind of a. It was again. It's one of those things where I kind of wish they had another take. She yeah, more. Fair. But, she. She. I mean, she. I think immediately knows what's going on and just yeah. is like thinking about the whole like. I think I think she's a processor. She's like, okay, we're at a wedding, and and I think I know what just happened. I need to be strong, and, and, yeah. and, and hold I, it yeah, it, I, I don't know. That's what I kind of took from yeah. it. But I just like the, the the when she's the the science, like she just doesn't. She's like, oh, you know what? You don't. You decide you want to do the science thing. I'm I'm all about that. Right. Um, even like the Hagen Dazs, they had their little special thing with the Hagen Dazs. Like I just, Hagen-Dazs. I love that. Like the the fact that she had the Hagen Dazs and and it was you could tell it was their little thing that it was like that's a connection for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. That's a that's an awesome movie mom. Yeah. And in in the Pantheon, we did movie moms uh, uh, back in the day. And you know what, uh, Nate, I'm ashamed that you didn't take Kathy Bates. I'm a little bit ashamed too. Mm-hmm. But you know what, maybe we'll redo that one. <laughs> All right, Tony. What are you what, what what are you snagging? All right, I'm snagging the idea of a role model. All right, just the uh, the kind of person that just is in somebody's life. And in this case, for Angus, it's his grandpa. It's Ivan. Um, and I feel like at points in time in life, especially especially in my life, I feel like there always has to be a person that is not your parent that will come in and give those bits of advice. All right. Um, when I, when I was in high school, it was my religion teacher. I went to a, an all boys Catholic high school and, uh, this guy, he had the corniest jokes in the world and he just made everybody's day brighter. He was one of the most popular teachers, uh, that, uh, this high school's ever seen. 
um, he really inspired me to just, you know, keep on going and just realize that it's not the realization of what people think of you. It's just who you think of yourself. Uh, so, Mr. Tanner, if you're listening to this, uh, man, I respect you. And I hope that there are role models in everybody's life because we need them. And I hope it continues to this day. Solid. Okay. Uh, so mine, you know, this is so, so you would think, right. And I would think for me, the total on brand would mean to be like the friendship. I'm a big friendships guy. Right. So you'd think I might want to snag he and Troy. Um, you'd think that like him getting the girl and the kind of the dance and the like overcoming that's right on brand. But for me, it's, I, I'm snagging the family dynamic. Like I, I think, both the fact that the family dynamic is not a traditional one, right? It's grandpa living at home. It's, his, you know, it's his mom. And in fact, now, you know, even kind of the like sense that there was, there was, a, you know, maybe a, his father was gay and we don't know that, you know, one way or the other, you know, the, it's, it's silent, but we kind of know that now from the, from the background. But like the fact that we have this non-traditional family and that sometimes the dynamic between, um, you know, he and his, his grandfather is kind of like almost big brother, little brother. They're snipping at each other in funny ways at the dinner table. Yeah. And they kind of have this riff, and he's kind of playing jokes on him with the with the playing colors to wake him up. Um, and his grandpa's kind of acts annoyed with him when he's really, like, cherishing in a lot of ways, having him around and trying to give him advice and things. To me, right, like, that's the heart of the movie. And, and I don't, you know, normally that w- would be overshadowed by the sort of trajectory of the coming of age. But for me, I think it's – and, and, you know, given what we – I mean, I given what we now know based on the, the interview with Charlie, I just can't say how blown away I am that, like, he went toe-to-toe after that being that early to acting with George C. Scott. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, that, you know, obviously he's, he's young and he's early and, you know, there, there were – there's, you know, I don't want to overstate this, but, like – Part of the reason that I think I was so shocked was really because, like, those scenes, he's really good in them. And and I think as as small-town kids, I think that, and I'm not going to say that it's just us, but it's like, we kind of sniff out realism. Like, that's a big thing, I think, just kind of us growing up is, like, we we can tell fake versus real. Mm-hmm. And and I think just one thing about growing up in a small town is you you sniff through fakeness. And so we like to see what's real. And I, and, I, and whenever I see characters on screen that, that seem real, yeah, like when they have a relationship that seems like they actually care about each other, that's important to me, and, yeah. and and I see that a lot, especially with him and Ivan. Like that's, oh, man. that that it and and yeah, you're right. For a, a kid to just j- show up and go toe to toe with George C. Scott, that's just just wild. Yeah, yeah. I, never, I never once thought, oh, this kid's out of his league. Yeah, he's out never. with yeah, never. <laughs> Kathy was, Bates and, yeah. and fucking yeah. George hey, C. Scott. your first role, yeah. kid. You've never acted before. You're gonna be with yeah. Kathy Bates and George C. Scott. Good Bl- luck. Blows me away that yeah. this was his first <laughs> film. And yeah. he just was like, yeah, just it just felt completely right. All yeah. right, felt killed. Cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm snagging the family dynamic and especially the scenes between he and uh, his grandfather. Hey, can I unzip some body bags? Please. Oh, you're just yeah, you're just chomping. Right you're ahead. ready. Yeah, Look at him. I'm it eager. Slowly. Slowly. Right ahead. Slowly. So 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 my body bag is. So I, I talked about the, the the football game a little bit. Like the, the fact that it ended up being JV football was weird, but Angus is a beast on the field. And uh, uh, the fact that he gets no respect, and, and I, I think Tony kind of mentioned earlier, it's like he makes the most amazing play to win the game by not only just knocking out, he, he gets two pancakes immediately yep. on, on to set up the pass like all the way down the field. And then he's like, screw it. This guy caught the ball. It's an interception. I'm going to go down there and, and cause some chaos. And he goes and, and causes the fumble that lets them win the game. You, on a, as, as someone who's played on a football team, that kid is getting celebrated. The people are running and jumping and picking him up and jumping with him and celebrating him. And he's going to be as big a hero as as the dumb quarterback that, that picked up the ball somehow and, and, and takes it into the end zone. So. Especially back then, you know, before the days of concussion, when a hit like that, would people would just be like, oh, people would be would going, remember that hit forever. Oh, right. Yeah, he would be, they would just be celebrating him in the locker room. And even if, even if James Vanderbeek is a dickhead and hates him because he's been punched out by him like three different times when he was growing up, Everybody else on the team is going to be like, God damn, this kid is a beast. And, and you know what? When we get to a, 
alternate endings, I might have some words about uh, his football career as well. So. <laughs> but he would be much more appreciated, and I don't care even if he was like a dork and weird. When you're making those types of plays on the football field as a team, he's going to be celebrated. The coaches would be going nuts. Like when you go back to the the film yeah. the oh, next yeah. on 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 Monday, D Cleater, he would be getting all the stickers on his helmet, and they'd be like, <laughs> "This is what we want to see on the football field." Do you see that hustle? Like they would be going nuts which, about him. Which is why I'm glad they actually had the line from the principal saying, we, "Oh, how we, we would lose our best right. yeah. JV lineman," right. which was cool. He got a little bit of recognition. Somebody and, saw. and his grandfather says, "Like you're a good football," you know. Right. Like, so it's, so it's right. not they don't totally they're not blind to it completely. But that one scene is like the, the coaches would be just building him up so much, yeah. and and his teammates would feed off of that. The fact well, that the coaches think he's amazing. Well, he's also like I mean, you know, as described and as demonstrated, like the dude's a big guy that's fast like yeah yeah and, and as we know right like that's the rare commodity commodity that dude's already getting looks from from colleges yeah that no, size and, 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 and that's when when they said it's a fresh it was a jv game and You're then they're freshmen man. i was like if he's freshman he's, well, and he's playing jv and like who's the varsity team right that kid yeah. gets brought up right you know, <laughs> yeah. no, question, no question so uh, so yeah his his whole football situation uh there's just some big body bags the way they edit it the way they kind of filmed it and the fact that he getting disrespected that just does not happen. Did you see to say that Angus has a big body bag? <laughs> That's fucked up. You're sizest, bro. I don't sizest. know if I said that, but if wow. I did. He are, said are, big body bag. He did. <laughs> You know okay. what? And you well, know, hey, hey, and you know what? You're not even in as great a shape as I was when I was a freshman. So why don't you just stop talking about it. Okay, um, okay so uh, I'm going to body bag the plot device, the, the Troy plot device of giving the tape up. So I, I, I. I so that they like beat him up. They have no idea that he has anything on Angus. They beat him up and break his arm. Right. And so then like he's gotten his freaking arm broken. They have no they're not blackmailing him, right? They don't have anything on him. It's just like the threat of what? They're gonna break his other arm? I mean like <laughs> right. what the fuck? And then he's like, Okay, I know. I'm gonna give you the worst shit you could possibly have that you don't know exists. Right. He's not right. like, okay, here's the thing. Like Angus, you know, he picks his nose. They they didn't like come up with he didn't like come up with some, you know, like here's Angus's sock that he jerked off into. It's crazy. He danced with the blow up doll and he was acting like it was Michelle. Like I mean like Yeah. Yeah, what so so I'm like, why why is that like you couldn't come up with a better move than to, to try to figure out I mean and I, uh, you know, I mean, even if you want the tape to be the thing, right? Like, I can come up with ten better ways for them to accidentally find the tape. And the way they do it in like the shadow, so it's like, you're, are you supposed to like not think it was him? Like, totally. <laughs> it yeah, was just yeah. weird that they did. Like, oh, I wonder who that is, giving them some secret info up on the hill. Well, yeah. why? Well, I mean, for one, like, why doesn't he just like have the video camera? Like, why? Why don't they just have Troy with the video camera somewhere? You know, I think like I called him doing- Michelle. It's Melissa, right? It's Melissa. My bad. Yeah, by the way, Melissa Lefevre is a fire name. Melissa Lefevre. Lefevre was like, he, oh. she, they killed when they made that name. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I don't love, like, I, I think it's not, it, you know, I want to, it's not that I don't, it's not as much that I don't like the plot device, is that I feel like there were so many good substitutions, right? Like, right. it's one thing if you're like, ah, eh, there's not a good way to do this, so, like, I don't like it, but it's just like. It was felt lazy, you know. That, so you were, we were talking earlier about like things that we don't like. It's just stuff like that that just seemed kind of like okay. Now we're just kind of like you said, pushing the the plot forward just for right. pushing it forward's sake. Like I have all the. By the way, we did Top Gun a few weeks ago, and I have all these like many of these similar takes about Top Gun Maverick that I'll do in uh, some exclusive content on Pantheon once. We Wait, did Pantheon. you hold back? You well, hold back had, on the Top Gun. We hadn't plot? seen Maverick yet. Oh, 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 Maverick takes. I'm sorry. So yeah, the, the and I one. have some super. Part two. I, I, I am oddly negative about it relative to the whole world. Uh, so so you'll get that someday. No, no spoilers. I still haven't seen. Oh, uh, you <laughs> suck. Right. You, you, your statute of limitations running out. Already. I know. I know. All right. Hey, hey Tony. What, Tony? What do you got in a body bag? Oh it's my! It's unzipped. Word. It's sitting there. It's just uh, what? 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 You put in there. So I was basically just going back and forth about the body bag because I was like I was hearing all sorts of takes on it, but. I think my body bag lends to the fact that it's Mr. Kessler from Jefferson High School, where uh, our our famed football star was about to enter a career into nerdery with uh, with some science geeks. But I think it's <laughs> the um, I think it's the uh, premise of how we present uh, schools that are quote unquote better than what the situation is. All right. Yeah. Um I mean pers- you can get into this prestigious Exactly. And just like the pretentiousness about 
I ran into football traffic on the way here, and that is why I'm <laughs> late, and I expect you to stay here to present you present your science project. And I was do, like, do you know who that dude is? Honestly, I don't. So, uh, and, and Back to the Future 2, this, I'm a huge Back to the Future nerd. So Back to the Future 2, uh, uh, after Biff gets punched out, and he's like, I think he stole his wallet. And he's like, I think he stole his wallet. It's the, it's the same <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. It's, it's a, he's, so he's wow. very much a, wow. a, a, a very select actor, but he's like the dorky guy that like that, that thinks that Marty stole Biff's wallet. So, Oh, my word. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a deep take. Right that's a deep that take. is a very deep take that same I never guys, thought about. My, my wife knows that. She's like, oh, I know that dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because you've made a watch Back to the Future 2 17 times. Yeah. yeah. Good, good shit. <laughs> All right. So my body bag. So, I have a couple, going, so going off of Nate's. My biggest issue with that whole plot line is how quickly he accepted his buddy back. He, yeah. He yeah. Accepted, <laughs> he, it worked he, out, though. He it forgave out. Troy pretty fucking quick. Because yeah. it worked and, out. He's, he's, in the, he's in the throes of, like, passion and, like, oh, my God, like, this is working out. He's going to high-five everybody. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It felt really weird to me. He would give Rick a high-five. He's like, fuck it. This is all working <laughs> out for me. I know. I don't know. It just seemed awfully <laughs> fast. He gave him the one thing that was probably the most damning piece of evidence he could do. And I don't know. It just it, he needed to suffer a little bit more, but whatever. Um, well, I think at this point you realize that Troy is Angus's only friend at that point, and I think fair he, enough. You maybe, know. maybe he took it out on him later because he had to he had to move schools and become the Shermanator. Yeah, right. oh, oh yeah, the American Pie movie. Totally, oh, yeah. totally, totally recreated him. And then the weird dude from Can't Hardly Wait. So let's just not forget <laughs> about right. that. The, the, clep, the klepto. Oh my yeah. god, he was yeah. in so many high school teenage movies. It's wild. Um, so something else really quick. Uh, is something I kind of wanted one more little scene. Between you, know, you were talking about the, the relationship between Angus and his grandfather, which, yeah. which was great, but. I, I kind of still felt like there was one little thing that I would have loved to have seen where it was where he actually gave him some, you know, a piece of advice or something where he actually put it into into use. Because, like, a lot of the film is Angus kind of saying, hey, whatever, Grandpa, whatever. It's like he wasn't really listening to him. But, like, I, I would have liked to have seen a scene where he's like, hey, dude, just say what the fuck. And then he went and did it. And then it works like, oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he didn't have to die in order to kind of, like, make that happen. Finally, yeah. I, I kind of wanted that. To, to kind of solidify the relationship before he passed, then that would make the passing a little more impactful. To yeah, me. Grandpa should have got one win where he's starting to trust him, like, oh, exactly. maybe he's got some good advice, right. and then he dies, and then it makes it a little bit more like, okay. Exactly. Because, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because like you said earlier, like, I shit you not, when he when Grandpa died, first of all, I saw it coming. I was like, of course he's going to fucking fall asleep, pretending he's like, he think he's going to be asleep. Yeah, the whole fall yeah. asleep yeah. playing is like... I a, saw it coming. Anytime really they have a device where it's like right. very yeah. intentional yeah, how yeah, he yeah. wakes him up each time, you know it's not going to wake up. The heavy's coming. So yeah. maybe because I saw it coming, it, it literally didn't affect me at all. And I did, I teared up. I cried when he went and, and visited his buddy because I felt yeah. this connection between his friend who he played chess with. Right. It was really That's strange. Exactly. And, and I was like, why the fuck am I feeling it now? Why am I not feeling it when he, he died? He actually died. Yeah. So that anyway, I, so I think one little scene could have maybe fixed that better, and it yeah. could have been a whole – Editing thing, budget thing, or whatever. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's, I like, that's yeah. a great point. Well, yeah. you also thought Kathy Bates was more worried about the food than her, her right. dad died. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You don't, you know, it's a wedding food's important. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, that's our that's our snag shag body bags. And next up, you're going to get some streaming recommendations. All right, so I'm going to kick this one off and I'm going to go a pretty different direction because it's not it's a kid that's quite so out of water. It's not such a bully but it's like a kid it's a kid in high school really trying to navigate things and has a lot of complicated you know dynamics with family members and friends and friends with family members uh and she also has a mentor that gives her some really like sage advice and there's some fun twists in it too with you know the the mentor what you think the mentor is going to be and so forth and that's the edge of 17 so if you haven't seen it, it's 2016. You can watch it right now on Netflix. Woody Harrelson is the mentor in that. And, like, you kind of expect it to go one direction kind of cynically, and it doesn't. And it's, it's really good. So, so I, it's one I like. I've seen it a few times now, and, and I'm, I'm pretty, pretty far in on it. So uh, go grab that one if you like the kind of high school, a little bit of less obvious coming of age with some good uh, conversation. And what's that on? As I said, you can watch it immediately on Netflix. Oh, my bad. I, I wasn't listening. It, it is your bad. 
All right, so my streaming recommendation is I'm going to stick a little bit with the bullying. There's definitely some bullying in this movie, but I, I saw, as we were talking about just a second ago, I, I saw Maverick not too long ago, and Val Kilmer just does not get a whole lot of runtime, and it's kind of sad because he's had uh, uh, throat issues and stuff like that, so he couldn't really participate as much as I wanted him to. But if you want to watch Val Kilmer just doing his thing as an action hero, you need to go check out Willow. He gets he gets bullied by a, a, a burgle cut who's just an absolute dick in his village, and he he learns to overcome him, and uh, he he realizes that he has he has his role, and and he ends up being kind of a hero. And there's actually going to be a Willow series coming out on the same place you can watch the original movie. Disney Plus is doing a, a, a series very soon here. They've already got a, a trailer for it. Check it out. It looks legit. It looks it, really it, good. It, they're putting some money into it, and, and, and it's uh, mm. it, it's going to be pretty pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. Warwick Davis is re- reprising his role. Um, I don't think Val Kilmer is reprising, which sucks. I do not think I so. I hope that they at least mention him or give him some some props, but or less, or maybe it's going to be a surprise. That would be awesome for a surprise, but I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I, I tell you what, one of my fondest high school memories – is we watched that movie a lot in your dad's classroom. <laughs> My dad <laughs> loved the movie. Brad's dad loved Willow. And it was so funny because every once in a while, you would hear your dad all of a sudden go, Willow, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, hearing your dad doing that voice, he's the football coach, you know, a- athletic, yep. and he's doing this goat voice, whatever thing. <laughs> oh, God, it used to kill me. I love it. I have yeah. such fun. Oh, yeah, no, we, we love that movie. He's looking forward to the series, too. And, and yeah, so Willow on Disney Plus. Uh, check it out. There's some, some bullying elements. It's somebody who's, who's, who's being treated badly, but they learn to kind of come into their own. Uh, great movie. We also did that on the also rans. That's I mean, not also rans, but uh, uh, an old school garage the, the, tapes in the basement tapes. Yeah. Basement tapes, oh, nice. BVK. That was that was something well, we did, was on and, there, yeah. and we might have to bring that back someday. So we'll see. So this is a movie that actually was brought up completely randomly on, on a recent pod, and I, I was I was surprised because I think Zach brought it up. It's a movie called My Bodyguard from 1980, and if you want to talk about a bully oh. movie, and it's it's I, I remember seeing it in the theater and really enjoying this movie. I haven't watched it in forever, so I mean it may be horrible a rewatch, but it's got um, Adam Baldwin and Matt Dillon and Chris Makepeace. Chris Makepeace is uh, Rudy the Rabbit in Meatballs, and so he's he's a young kid. He's getting fucked with, and. He ends up so um, Matt Dillon is a bully and screwing with him and just being a total dickhead to him, and so Chris Mace, Makepeace hires Adam Baldwin to be his bodyguard, to to be the tough guy. Well, then Matt Dillon goes and gets an even tougher tough guy. <laughs> and so yeah, it's 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 but it's it's I remember it being it's, it's kind like of the a, arms race. Yeah, it's like a Cold yeah. War. Uh, uh, so he hires this undertones. like fucking this like bald biker dude, this fucking total badass. And so anyway. But, <laughs> But I remember it being a really good movie, and um, so anyway, it's called My Bodyguard from 1980. Where, where can Check you it find out. it? So it was on. I just had it up. Oh my! And I closed the screen. It, I don't think you can um, get it for free. It's like on Fubu or something. I don't know. <laughs> Canopy. And now I'm panicking and can't find the screen. And uh, oh yeah, it's on Apple TV for 3.99. Or right, Amazon. Rental. You're, you're rental. going for the rental. You're rental. That's so. rental. Rental. It's rental. You know, it's not like people aren't uh, taxed enough. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. All right. So, so, so uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I didn't have anything until about ten minutes ago. So fuck off. Uh, uh, all right. So we're now alternate endings or reshelves, where we take the movie either and, and or uh, take the either change the ending, or we just take it and make it a totally different genre. But you do know what we always do now before we get to those alternate endings is you have to talk about the ending movie song because, you know, this one, he's walking down the street and she takes a glance at him. She looks back through the window and he's kind of doing a little narration and then you kind of get this like nice little score that's kind of ending the mu- uh, ending the movie here. I mean, if you want to just, just dumb it up a little bit and make it a little silly and stupid, why not as he's walking away, Whitney Houston's classic, Oh, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. You can bring that in at the end, and he does a little heel click. Oh, it would be a tremendously trash ending. <laughs> so I'm kind of on your on your page there. A little different, though. All right. What do, what okay. do, what do you got as he's walking down so the street? So he's, he's, they say their goodbyes. He starts to walk down the street. It is in narration. 
she opens up the the, the little window, the, the this you know the curtain. I want your sex. <laughs> George <laughs> Michael. I want your. <laughs> and then it, it, it actually ends with the, come on with her opening up the, the screen like that. Oh, and then it goes to black. Yeah. That's not bad. There you go. Nate, do you got any you got any finishing songs? <laughs> I've got nothing. Finish him. I've got nothing. <laughs> I, you two are much better at music than I am. Oh, well, at some point man. I was thinking because because I was looking at year appropriate. So what, like what songs were big in 95? Um and because he kind of overcomes, it didn't make as much sense, but Loser by Beck so was a huge I song. So that would have brought it would have been around. cool earlier yeah. in earlier in the film. So I didn't think it was good at the end, but Loser earlier I'm a on. Loser baby. Oh wow. Yeah, that would have been better. Oh, bad. why don't you kill me? Well, Nate, if you don't got a song, I do actually have kind of an alternate ending. Pick me up. Pick and it's, me up. it's related to that that football. You know, uh, he was a beast on the football field, and that's not going to go unnoticed by the coaches. That's not going to go unnoticed by, by, as Nate mentioned earlier, scouts. His it, the alternate ending is that I mean he goes on to become a just an iconic offensive lineman who is is just wrecking people. He gets moved up to varsity his sophomore year. Um, he's just crushing people. He's he's great on pass. On, on, obviously, he's great on on pass protection. On, and when he he gets violent when he's in run protection, he just just pancakes people left and right. So uh, he ends up he's going to college for for a football scholarship, uh, and that man ends up being Tony Saragusa. <laughs> Rest in peace. Rest the in goose. peace. Yes. Um, so so I, I have. I'm sorry. Uh, was that uncalled for? Wow. <laughs> was that a little too soon? It's too soon, Brad. I apologize. Uh, so my alternate ending is as usual. Angus till dawn. So Angus uh, shows up at the dance in his purple suit. It, things proceed as they expect. Um, he and Melissa go outside. They return to the dance, and they expect to like be able to, you know, do their dance and do their thing. And then all of a sudden, everyone's a vampire. And so it ends with Angus having to fight his way out, p- protecting Melissa. And, like, they get all the way to the door, and there's James Vanderbeek. And he has his, like, fangs out really deep. And Angus, like, thinks he's done for. And then all of a sudden, Troy comes through with the steak. Oh, I thought Ivan was going to come back as, like, the head vampire and, like, like just He's, like, a good vampire? Yeah, he's, like, a good protective vampire. I like that better. Kind of like the grandpa in um, in Lost (laughs) Lost Boys. Boys. Okay, edit edit, edit that out. And then all of a sudden... (laughs) Edit that out. Ivan comes back from the dead, and all of a sudden the stake comes through Vanderbeek's back, like, out his chest, and he falls forward, and there's Ivan, a vampire back from the dead, but a good vampire. There we go. And be, be, the beak is dead. Angus and the La Fever make their way out of the gym and go to credits. Yeah, that's like okay. the rip off of the Lost Boys, but I dig it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, like, I like it. I like that you're you're on that same vibe, and you know our boy Zach isn't here, um, and so you know he does have an interesting taste in films, and and he does like you know kind of different things, and so I did change this to a horror film. And so the events happen kind of the same at the beginning as, as, as the movie. But then Moxon's crew, or Vanderbeek, or whatever, I call him Moxon because he's literally wearing like almost the same uniform as he does in Varsity <laughs> I, Blues. I think he just took it from yeah. one movie to the other. Right. Uh, so his crew, so the other boys, um, start to have some interesting deaths happen. Like one of them kind of shows up. He's, got, he's dead, and he's like this strange shade of like yellow, green you know, type things. Like, okay, how this guy die? It's kind of weird. And then another kid, they find him. He's got, like, vines and branches and shit growing out of him. Like, these really weird deaths. And then it, it eventually culminates into the dance. And there's the big showdown with Dawson, uh, Vanderbeek, whatever the fuck you want to call him, at the dance. And he's about to punch Angus, and he just spontaneously combusts. Just blows up. And then... Kind of a ready or not type kind of, of Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, finally, Angus decides to confess to everyone that he's been using the bullies as a science projects and cause he's that all into chemical, science. Oh, chemical. Yeah, love it. Oh. and he's been using them to, to get into his, his special school. 
Uh, he thought, and so he's basically the bullying has caused him so much fucking stress that he becomes that he yeah he's kind of evil and he's but he's using these science he he's thinks, like, he's oh like, they'll they'll want me in the school because these he, science experiences he's so great. He's basically K like it's Carrie. It's he like he brings an exploded yeah. carcass back to the uh, the, the, the school admissions <laughs> guy and drops in there. He's like, look what I did, motherfucker. I science. So that. he confesses all this shit <laughs> and and you know the, like the authorities you know the the sirens are going off. They're starting to show up and then like his best friend Troy comes up and like hugs him and apologizes and stuff for for what he did to betray him with a film and all that stuff anger says dude i forgive you and kind of you know places his hand on his cheek and then as they walk off you know they, they take him under custody and the camera goes back to troy and right where he touched him on his cheek there's these little blisters starting to fall oh on his cheek. he killed <laughs> troy because he <gasps> fucked him over dude oh and this is like a serial killer now man damn that yeah. got deep zach's gonna Yeesh. love it yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> in honor of zach for sure zach's that's for you buddy love it oh, oh. man Wow. So that was that's a pretty good run. The only one, the one thing I just as you were talking about that with the other bullies that we didn't talk about ever, but you know who one of the two bullies is that is with it's E from Entourage. Entourage. Yeah. yeah. Which I like couldn't, you know, the first time 10 years I would have seen it, I would have been like I don't know who that guy is, but now seeing it, you know. Yep. Um okay. So that was Angus. With Thank, Angus. With Angus. And Tony, who inspired us to do Angus, so we appreciate his uh, his pushing us to do that. What are we doing next week? I we think might. we're gonna try to do a little bullying. Yeah, ourselves. I think I think we're all feeling we're feeling bullyish. So we got a draft coming, and what better to do than the most memorable school age school related bullies to follow on? Dawson bullying Angus. It's 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 an interesting uh, topic because we could we could kind of go stray off the path a little bit, but we're trying to reel it in with school aged. But uh, we're gonna yeah. find out. I, I want to say that happens. that not knowing Angus and then finding out that that Dawson's the bully there. Now he has two rules where he's a complete like dickhead jerk, and then he's got Dawson's. But I'm like, that's two rules to one where he's one's. A, so it was a surprise that he did a good guy role because he's he's now known for bad guy roles because uh, uh, for for both Angus and for uh, the rules, rules of, of attraction. attraction. He's just yeah. a dick. Although there he is Moxon, and where he oh, kind, he comes kind of a dick in varsity. Was just kind of a two two. I don't want. Oh, your I guess life. I guess I don't talking. want your life. And then you he's didn't in, do it. And he was actually nice in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. So when are we going to do Varsity Blues? Dude, I, oh boy, my buddy Josh mentioned that he goes, he goes, "Oh, Josh wants it." He, he's, There's he, demand. Well, he was saying, "He's like, dude, this is your second Vanderbeek, man." When's, I think when's Varsity Blues. We might actually have to try to contact Vanderbeek and just be like, "Bro, come on." We've done two. I, I think I think we have to. We we've hit up a couple of movies. Nate like was in your fan club back in the day, so I think I it's about time. I was the president of the Dawson's Creek that we need to go ahead and. Uh, but you're just trying to get closer to. Uh, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Er mm. Erroneous. Mm. <laughs> All right. So that was whatever Ang it takes, Nate. Whatever it takes. That was Angus. I hope you enjoyed the pod. I hope you enjoyed us talking to to uh, Charlie and and talking about you know his experience becoming Angus. Uh, and I hope you'll join us next week when we do the most memorable bullies draft. Hey, folks, share us on the socials. Like, like tell your friends about it. Like, there's some fun stuff. I know you guys are enjoying the pods, and like, if you're enjoying it, there's other folks that enjoy it. Well, and the best thing you can do is is literally just go to one of the wherever you listen, Spotify or or Apple Pods. You can hit the little three but three dots, I think, and you just hit share. It'll go right to your text messages. And just text some folks. And, and you like, just 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 think like, who's my who's the person I know that likes either podcasts or movies the most, or especially if anyone likes both, and just say, hey, this is a podcast I listen to that I like. That's the best thing you can do to help us. We don't we're not asking for you to send donations. Back, I just want you to share us. Back in the day, to support a band, you had to buy a fucking CD or an album yeah. or whatever. And now, just tell a friend. Tell and a that, friend. And just get streams. Yeah, that's that's free. It, it's free. It costs zero. It costs you zero. And if you really want to, you know, share, if you really want to help us out, like share one of our posts on your social medias. Uh, or comment, or uh, or go to Spotify or Apple Pods and leave us a review, and you know, tell us some cool stuff that you like about the pod. Or go to your favorite sporting event and streak across the field with the BVK podcast logo or something. That'll work too. That that's, works too. That's, that's free. Great, that's, doesn't that, cost that, you doesn't anything. Cost you anything. You'll probably get kicked out of that stadium. But who wanted to go back? Well, maybe some bail. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that if you do those things, that's cool. Um, but. Either way, just keep listening and uh, and let us know uh, what you're liking by going uh, following us on our socials. All right, that's Angus. Uh, we will uh, see you next week. Bye bye. I 
Start!